the weed. See you. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. Yeah, that's a bad thing to say. What is up, beautiful people? Welcome to How to Trade, formerly known as The Midday Show. That right there is your girl, Adara, and I am Sharif. And we got a great topic for you guys today. We got risk management and trade sizing within the context, obviously, of accumulation and distribution. The topic we have been covering all week. We'll get to that in a hot second. Quickly, let's cover our trades, though. I've been doing the dance here with no pants, with AAPL. Oh, hold on. I forgot the patented roll call. Oh, my God. Aw, uh, come on, bro. Let's go. We got Harry Lou. We got the crazy stitch lady. We got naps. Okay. Stefan Gilbert, Pitchbull, Mr. Long Shorts, and James D. Obviously, can't forget about that. In addition to James D, we also have Polly D. Like that one as well. Klopp, what's up, my man? We got Matt C. We got Robin Lou. We got Hans Bear, Eddie R, Benton C, Zoltan, Patrick Langlois, Rich Naples, Nick Free, Hans Beer. It's too many to name. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for being with Adara and I. Let's cover some of these trades here. Uh, I'm in a short right now on Apple. I've been with this short for a little while. Obviously, Apple reeling off the selling of um, by Berkshire Hathaway, obviously, and uh, the Soros Fund, both offloading some of their Apple's positions yesterday, guys. So we'll keep an eye on that. But right now, so here, here's the explanation for the position. Let me just uh, get into this one so I can explain my position. So initially got short here when I sat down, but I did like this level here at 182 to 182.10 as a key level of resistance. It was formerly support. You know how I feel about support flipping into resistance and vice versa. So I'm like, all right. If it, I already wet my beak through the break of 50, but it, if it does come up into 182, I'm going to reinitiate the short. And that's exactly what I did uh, on this bad boy. I just want to explain why I did that because that's what we've been doing lately. So the initial entry on this monster over here was at 182.86. It then comes up to test 182 again. We get that short looking for resistance, sorry, for previous support to flip to resistance. And now we've got our beak wetters um, in the seven in the 70s, 50s, and 40s, looking for another move down here on AAPL. But if it doesn't continue to move down and it flips a script on me and continues to move up, my, the end, my line in the sand is gonna be that 182 and a quarter. We'll take a bit of a punch there in the face, losing about, uh, well, it doesn't show my position quite yet, but it will once I get filled. We'll, we'll get out 182 and a quarter. That's gonna be my line in the sand, but hopefully Apple continues to dump both on the day and in the coming days because I've got something here awfully close to where we're trading at now, Adara. I'm sitting on my personal account at 180 and a half looking to get filled. Yeah, I know that that level and that Apple dip buy has been the apple of your eye for some time there. And initially, I forgot that that was your long-term plan. And you're like, yelling, yeah, like Apple go down. And I was like, <laughs> and then I remembered you're trying to get it lower for the dip. So that makes much more sense now. Imminent sense. Um, hi, everyone, as well. I don't know why I said that. We'll say hi. Um, it's really funny, too. So I was looking at the position board while Sean and Neil were still talking. And for a mm. second, I forgot that the position board had already switched to us. And I was like, oh, Sean's in Tesla, the exact same place I am. No, ah. I am in Tesla. It is just me, as far as I'm aware. 193.10. Uh, I, I both like and am very nervous about this point of entry. And I'd like to explain my thesis for this. So I liked, we held this, we dropped, and then we held this 193 area beautifully. Like a glove, you know what I'm gonna say. Um, and we keep kind of wicking below and then coming back. The only thing that makes me nervous is this formation does not look the most bullish, which is why I'm scared. Uh -huh. um, I'm giving this about 50 pennies. My first profit taker is set and ready to go and have its beak dipped into the cyber truck at that 194 area. So it's about a, what, like a, a one to two risk to reward. Not too shabby. And then I'm saving a piece for the dream up into this 195. I will certainly be out by the time this candle uh, returns. Yeah, Matt C, uh, stop on Tesla, 190, uh, 192. What is this, like 192 uh, is kind of 60 area where we kind of had this chop and turn earlier. So I'm giving it about 50 cents for about a dollar. Um, Bang. For that first profit taker there. So about a one, about a two to one risk to reward, more or less, at least for the first profit taker. Let's go, Tesla. Let's drive that cyber truck while not running <laughs> Apple up because you know we respect our peers here That'd be on the great high trade. If, uh, you if could, they could just move independently. Yeah, if you could just talk to it, Adara, and let it know exactly what uh, you and I are conspiring. 
um, <laughs> you know, it'd be, be, be just fantastic over here. Wouldn't it? Um, yeah. All right, let's get to work because uh, we have a lesson to teach and uh, we're a little bit behind. So let's start up this bad boy. Guys, we are not using the side topics anymore. Instead, we're going to use the PowerPoints and hopefully the PowerPoints show up a little bit better. We've tried to make some adjustments so that you can see exactly what topic we're talking about. Let's get started. As we mentioned, we are talking about risk management and trade sizing within the overall context of accumulation and distribution. You know, some people would say that this is the first lesson we should have done because, you know, if you don't have an account with which to trade, you can't trade at all and you've got to protect those dollars and cents if you want to have that next trade. So let's start right to it. So identifying accumulation and distribution patterns is just the first step. The real test lies in navigating these paths or these phases, mind you, with responsible risk management and optimal trade sizing. Let's explore the key principles here. So the first one, obviously, risk management and fundamentals. Always have a stop loss, guys. That goes without saying. You hear the Neil talking about this, the Katina man. Everybody is talking about stop losses. There's no, no stop loss gang up in, on this desk over here. So no, no, none of that. I saw that online. The, this order automatically, in case you're wondering what stop orders are, this order automatically sells your position if the price goes against you at a predefined level, limiting potential losses. Think of this as your financial airbag in case you, know, you get into that trade like accident. That. Yeah, <laughs> why not? Um, always define your risk tolerance ahead of time as well. Super important. This is the maximum percentage of your account um, you're willing to risk on any single trade, on any one trade. Be honest with yourself though. This isn't about bragging rights. This is about longevity, okay? So taking bigger positions that you can't afford or can't afford to lose that money uh, should cause you to rethink that entire, um, that entire assessment, okay? And plan your trades before entering. I can't specify this enough. You saw me uh, kind of, um, what was it, be more, um, more impulsive with a trade, um, I believe on Monday it was, I forget the ticker, but it was super impulsive and you know, I was lucky to get out of that break even. But you know, you're always gonna uh, somehow revert back to your old habits some way. It's just really about trying to limit those times that you revert back to the bad habits. So plan your trades before entering. This means knowing your entry point, your exit point, and your stop loss level. So your entry point, your exit point, and your stop loss level before you click that buy button. Be honest, uh, sorry, be honest with yourself. Again, this is not about bragging rights. Emotions can cloud judgment in the heat of the moment. So you wanna have all those beak wetters, those profit takers, those stop losses. You wanna have that already uh, planned ahead of time. Um, and have a trading journal, guys. So consider a trading journal to track your trades. We talked a lot about this before, but we're gonna talk about it again. Track your trades, your wins, your losses, and your emotions, how you felt during that trade, how you felt when it went against you, how it felt when you were in the money. You wanna chart all that uh, so that when you review it later, you can you know, reflect on it. This self-reflection helps refine your approach and risk management even better. Remember, risk management isn't exciting, but it is essential. It's the foundation for, trade, for sustainable trading success. Take the time to understand and implement these principles and your trading journey will be smoother, less stressful, and potentially more profitable. Now go forth and trade responsibly. Wow. Questions yeah. or comments to dare? Yeah, no, I think one thing too I want to say is um, uh, we've, you know, we talk about this a lot. I know this is something Obi and I had discussed at one point where when he, uh, he and I were on this desk together. But basically, the idea that even if a trade goes against you, it's not necessarily a bad trade as long as you adhered to your risk management. Right. And you know, this is a conversation he and I were having when I tried to short Nvidia when it broke 500, <laughs> which was obviously not my best life choice. But the second it went against my my area of interest, we bolted. We ran right. for the hills. So I think you know what I mean. I think that that's really what we're trying to say here. And I think uh, having a plan, and I think also that's why, you know, knowing how you trade, knowing yourself is really important. So I find I am a lot more disciplined when I scalp because I, I'm scalping off of certain levels and I'm scalping in ranges. And again, not everyone's going to be a scalper, but whatever works for you, you have to make sure that you're doing that and that you, you stand exactly. by that. You have your method. There's a method to your madness is what exactly. I'm trying to say. Well said. 
Thank you. Um, all right, next topic, Adair, we're gonna talk about adapting risk for accumulation and distribution. Let's talk a little bit about that. So this heading really is about spotting accumulation and distribution patterns, which is all fine and dandy, but managing risk is where the real skill lies, all right? Let's adjust our risk approach based on these market phases. So the first thing is, obviously, what do we do in the accumulation phase for the adaptation of risk? Well, it's a bit different, because when we're in an upward trend, you might be more confident due to the bullish environment. Consider in a bullish, in a bullish trend, L slightly larger positions, but stick to your overall risk tolerance. So when you're in that uptrend, you know, and you're seeing that accumulation take place based on the principles that we talked to you already about over the past few days, you can increase your position size, but maintain your risk, uh, your risk parameters. Okay. Stop losses obviously goes without saying them. You can, you can place them a bit further away in a very obvious uptrend accumulation to give yourself that room and allow it to pull back yet continue. I mean, you're never really gonna guess exactly where it's gonna you know, retrace down to before it continues upward again. So you could give your stop losses a bit more room in a bullish uptrend accumulation phase, okay? But not too far away to avoid missing out obviously on significant advances, because if you do that, well then, you're just gonna give everything back, so. Um, the other part is di the distribution phase here, and this is a very important, the potential reversal. Be cautious as the trend might change. Use smaller positions in distribution phases and tighter stop losses to limit downside risk. Again, because the, sh the uh, nature of shorting, it's up 100 per or unlimited uh, risk potential because it could go against you theoretically an unlimited amount. That's not typically how it works, but yeah. Um, profit taking in the distribution phase, also a little bit different here. Consider taking profits in smaller increments to lock in those gains gradually, especially when you approach those key resistance levels that you should have already charted, Adara, on the chart. And remember, always prioritize risk management. Don't get carried away. Always uh, look to lock in potential profits and adapt, but stay disciplined. Adjust your approach, but stick to your overall risk tolerance framework. And think long term, guys. Responsible risk management is key to sustainable trading success, not just the short term gains. So remember those little tidbits right there. Questions or comments to dare? Yeah, no, I think one thing too is that really each, and I know I'm gonna keep saying this today, but I think it's really key. Risk management really is gonna depend on the person because I think of something Bears versus Bulls was saying in the chat yesterday, you know, make sure if you're gonna enter a trade, regardless of what other people are doing it, make sure you have your reason for entering the trade yes. and your thesis before entering the trade. Thanks. So shout out to him. But also I think with regards to this, what I wanna say is the idea that, um, you know, like you have to have your plan going in. It's not gonna be anyone else's plan. Like I know there were times where I think both you and I were in like a Tesla long at yeah. the same time. I think you had a slightly better entry than me, but really the point is we had different plans going into that trade. We had different risk management. We had different beak wetters. And I think we both ended up doing okay at it because yes. we, we had our own theses independent of each other. Because in the end you are, you know, traders are a bit, we're, we're together, but each individual person, you know, 100%. just like two Slovaks are like, are not, or every snowflake is different. Every trader is gonna be different as well. Thank you for bearing uh, through that analogy with me there oh, but I think yeah I think that's um a that's kind of my my take on that and I yeah. think really important that whatever your plan is whatever your strategy is you, you stick to it okay beauty all right guys let's go on trade sizing strategies next on the list uh is that Chilean I'm here yeah um Fabian forget the one size fits all approach forget about all that trade sizing needs to ad need to adapt to your own specific risk tolerance and the opportunity at hand. Here's a quick look at three popular strategies we can employ for trade sizing. So there is one called the fixed percentage approach. Sounds very straightforward. So here you're allocating a fixed percentage of your capital, whatever, let's say 2%, to your maximum per trade. So 2% maximum per trade of your overall capital in your account, regardless of the specific opportunity. This is simple and e easy to manage, but it might not capture the full potential of high probability trades. So when you see that huge meta 300 bounce out, it seems like yesterday, but now <laughs> looks like long ago in the price. Um, remember that 300 dip trade that we kept having on meta? So that was a higher probability trade. If you had taken 2% of that only, um, you, you would have left off 
obviously some money there on the table. So there's a good side to it and there's a little bit of a drawback. There's this other strategy called the Kelly Criterion. This is an interesting one. Uh, I'm not gonna go through the mathematical formula, but you can do it yourself. Go and Google Kelly Criterion. It's a mathematical formula considering, it considers the win rate, the average win-loss ratio, and your edge to determine the optimal position size. So your win rate, your average win-loss ratio, and your edge to optimize, or to determine, sorry, the optimal position size. This one potentially maximizes your profits if you use it correctly, but it is complex and requires a careful understanding of its limitations. So go ahead and give that a look. We're not going to belabor uh, the, the details of it on the show, but you are more than welcome, obviously, to look at that yourself. And then there's obviously volatility-based sizing. So you adjust position size based on the underlying asset's volatility. You can look at its beta, for example, right? That's one of the, the Greeks that you can look at to assess volatility. You allocate more for less volatile assets because it's lower risk and you allocate less for highly volatile or higher volatility assets. This is kind of an intuitive and a flexible approach but requires familiarity with different asset volatilities. Again, I would suggest that you use the Greeks in order to gauge that volatility. And if you don't know what the Greeks are, there you go. You can go and Google that. Um, here's a bonus little tip though. Consider using position sizing calculators online to help you determine the optimal trade size based on your chosen strategy and your specific risk tolerance. These are called position sizing calculators. Google them and uh, perhaps you know, get familiar with them. Maybe that is something that you can employ in your trading strategy. And remember, trade sizing is not about maximizing every trade. It's about finding the sweet spot between potential reward and manageable risk Choose, Adara, a strategy that suits your comfort level and adjust it as you need based on your experience and evolving trading goals. I really like that, yeah, and I think it's really accurate as well. And I think one thing too that I, I'd like to say too with regards to, to volatility-based sizing because it's something I do, I think sometimes too, uh, you know, I talk about like, oh, like getting back into it. Like, let's say you have a rough trade. You're getting a little bit nervous. Uh, maybe if you still want to get into the position, maybe just take a really small size. Because that's what I'll do sometimes right. if it's like my first uh, time, uh, for example, trading or shorting, especially NVIDIA that day, I'll take a really teeny tiny position, right? And then and then as I kind of get more comfortable, you want to average in. But also, I think the more, for me as well, the more confirming or confirmatory factors I have before entering a trade, the more likely I am to have a larger position. Mm -hmm. Whereas if it's just kind of more for like, sure, hey, I, I like agree. this one level, then, then maybe I'll take a little bit less, right? So I think it, it, it's it's a confluence of factors that will inspire my position sizing. I did do that on purpose, and I like that we got to hit the bang button I, there. I, you Should know what I, I like? I like the fact that the Chilean Nightmare and Ram Ram are just improvising constantly with uh, the screen layout. I Look absolutely love it. Yeah. Keeping I it mean, you're just killing it. Uh, shout out to Fabian and Ram. I think Ram Ram is doing some uh, video editing today, so it looks like it's the Chilean nightmare on the ones and twos. All right, here's some key points to remember, guys, as we wrap up the lesson. Don't overcommit, man. Uh, never risk more than you can afford to lose. I used to have friends that would message me, be like, hey, should I take a loan out on my car or my house to buy this, that, or the other? And I, I disagree, Katina Man. <laughs> yeah, Katina Man is like, yes. No, and I always said to them, never invest money you can't afford to lose. It may sound like, you know, super watered down, but that's just genuinely how I believe, what I believe. And risk versus reward. Oh, there we go. Don't overcommit. Risk versus reward. Aim for trades with favorable risk to reward ratios which is potential profit exceed the potential losses. Obviously sounds a lot easier said than done. And adapt your approach, guys. Adjust risk management and position sizing based on your confidence, on the trend that we're in, specifically in how well you trade with either an uptrend or a downtrend, and your overall trading methodology and how it's jiving with the current market conditions. By mastering these principles and integrating them into your trading routine, you gain the discipline, and you gain the control necessary to exploit the accumulation and distribution patterns while protecting your capital. Adara, that is all we have to say about that today. Yeah, that's really, I think, really important. And I think, too, also uh, one thing as well with regards to accumulation and distribution, specifically mm -hmm. for trade sizing and risk, that I think is, is kind of key and interesting 
is um, if you kind of can look at like the trend and how strong the trend is or how weak right. the trend is, right? That's what I was saying with regards to how I look at my position sizing. But also when I was taking some notes, I came across that being a really key thing where it's like, huh. if you have a stronger trend, maybe you want to add a little bit more. If you're not sure about the trend at first, you know, dip your toe in and then you might want to add some, some extra yeah. Yeah. pieces along the way, right? Add a piece for the dream instead of leaving a piece for the no, dream. No, and I couldn't agree more. I mean, because you, you, you add, let's just say you get in 100 shares mm -hmm. and you're 50, 50 pennies in the money. All of a sudden you have a buffer of 50 bucks, yeah. right? So then you can add another 100 shares on top of that because, well, then you, you know, you've got that buffer to, to help support you. So if it goes against you, sure, all right, you ended up losing the 50 bucks that you were up, but you're not down 50 bucks. Exactly. So I completely agree with you. Add to your winners. I mean, that's what everybody talks about. You add, you add to your winners and you cut your losers early. It sounds super simple, a lot harder to do in real life. What are you looking at there? Yeah, I mean, a couple people asked me to explain my Tesla short, so I would be pleased as punch to do so. Oh. I understand it seems just goes counterintuitive, and maybe it is, but I, I would like to, to talk through my thesis because I swear there is maybe a method to my madness, or at least, like, I have, you know, there are some reasons. So basically, I know we're short at VWAP. Mainly what I was looking at, though, this was supposed to be a bit scalpier. We, we got a little bit higher here, but we're having a really hard time decisively breaking 193.30, 193.40 area. Uh, we'll kind of get above it, and then we'll come right back down. Basically, much like I gave that, that long uh, 50 pennies of risk I'm giving the same to the short uh, and I say that also not just out of willy-nilly but this uh, these wicks to the upside that we could not decisively break above those are of interest to me I think for whatever reason that area into that 190 uh, 360 190 70 is some kind of sticking point for the stress law uh, for a cyber truck and so I just want to be really cognizant of that if we have a decisive break above that area I shall say sayonara and uh, but yeah that that's model why I wanted to get into this trade um, Sorry, not sorry. But yeah, I mean, I'm also, if, the more we hold up uh, below view up, the, I, I'm kind of tempted to add a really, really, really tiny um, addition to this trade, a tiny DCA, because uh, this this VWAP failure is interesting. And I realize, you know, this is as much as it could fail VWAP, but there's also a really good chance it could blast. I'm being very cognizant of that. But I also, you know, I think what I'm trying to practice too is if you like the idea of a trade, just get involved in the trade. I have my, my outs already planned should we dip there. But that yeah. is my... Um, my reason there. So shout out to John Smasky saying, remember Bruce Lee, be like water, which is a quote Obi's always bringing up there. So shout out to Obi, shout out to Bruce Lee. Um, and hopefully shout out to Tesla. No, I'm joking, it's fine. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll roll with the punches. We'll see how it goes here. Um, Aaron, or Joanna Brewster asking here about Meta. So let's look at, oh my gosh, Meta. Hello, Meta. Apple's pumping here, I gotta be careful. Yeah, nothing, yeah, Meta, oh my god, Meta, hello girl. This is a really nice look. Um, we had this kind of flattish bottom area, 47450, 10 o'clock we shoot up, and then we really, honestly, th this dip by at the, the 90 MA has proven very fruitful indeed. I think this is a really interesting look. Um, I like what we're doing here on Meta, very much to the upside, 483.10. What kind of levels do we have on this on the daily? Oh, okay. Okay, this could be really interesting because we really haven't gotten much into this level other than these wicks into it on um, earnings day and day two earnings. So I think this is a really nice look. Um, I think, and then also too, Meta looking like kind of a, a flag breakout as well to me on the daily. We had that move to the upside on uh, earnings. Then we kind of formed this flag pull. Should we break out? This could be very fruitful indeed. Again, not, you know, not a diagnosis, just my read on the chart. As um, just an just a outside observer, I think this is a very strong look. I will also give a little look here for Mara. Um, oh, Marathon to the downside for Mara. This, I was talking about this double top yesterday at 31. I was talking about this double top yesterday at 31. Mm -hmm. And I said, too, my thing is I'm always really hesitant, especially with these uh, crypto-related stocks, because crypto does not care about your feelings, even no. more so than the market doesn't care about your feelings. I wonder if the NOS boss is still holding that Mara swing from like $3. Oh, that would have been so it. good, yeah. Uh, Patty Ice, who isn't here today, has a monster swing trade on Mara. He's up like, I don't know, 30, 40, 50%, something like that. He's probably uh, not here today because of the snowstorm that's coming. He's got to drive. So shout out to Patty Ice, baby. Uh, he's not with us today, but We'll shout him out for that uh, for that trade. All right, let's get to this Apple trade uh, here if we're able to, because um, you know it popped up into 180, 190. So it popped up into my entry and right back down it goes. But here's what I'm seeing, and you guys tell me if you agree. What I'm seeing here is a succession of lower highs and bouncing off. You guessed it, resistance level or support level one, excuse me, on the pivots, which is on my chart 180, 135. The, 
In reality though, it's been more of a 181 and a half hold. So it's been holding the half dollar. But the reason I haven't been quick to get out of the entire position or the majority of the position, and I'm still holding a substantial size of it, is because of the succession of these lower highs. We still haven't put in a higher high. However, I have to be cognizant of the fact that we could start rounding out here as we definitely, we have been touching the 10 EMA a lot more often than we were initially. You have that touch here and then all of these candles here all had at least, at least a skimming on that one, uh, that 10 EMA. So I'm starting to notice, you know, we're putting in sequentially higher lows on these five minute candles over here, but we haven't broken through this monster. And that monster is what I'm talking about, that 182.15, 182.10. So initially I had my out at 182 and a quarter, but I'm thinking that that's no longer appropriate because I have this defined area over here on the five minute look. So if this area gets taken, that's a new high for me. Right? And if that's a new high, this isn't the trade that I want. I can be looking to get in later again. Where are you asked? Nobody asked, but I'm going to tell you anyway. 182.50, at least for now. If it comes back into VWAP, I could be looking for a VWAP rejection here on AAPL. So, case in point, I'm getting out. If it makes a new high above this candle over here at this 182.10, 182.15-ish area, Otherwise, I'm holding, I'm looking for high, lower highs and lower lows, looking for, to de-risk the majority of the position in front of that 181, a third. We'll see if that manifests. Right now, it's back into my entry again at 181.90. I've taken out about 30% of the position. I'm holding about 70. So we can't let this one go too much against us on the day. But look at Meta, bro. Meta, what the goodness gracious Meta. Goodness gracious meta, this thing is absolutely flying to the high side, completely outside of uh, you know the current trend on um, either the MAG7 or the FUCH. We just broke through resistance level two on pivots on meta. We, we're, we just took 484 uh, right now. We're on our way possibly to 485. I think we see meta 500 next week, man. Oof. Unreal. And we were just trading meta at 300. Feels like Nvidia. Right, but <laughs> anyway, very strong day on Meta. I don't have a setup on it. Obviously, this is a blue sky setup. We've never been this high before. Let me just confirm that. Let me look at the half an hour. Yeah, we've never been this high, or have we? No, we did. We popped up on the 2nd of February, but it was on a wicking basis into 486. The closing print on those half an hour candles, though, were at 482. So technically, we did get a bit higher than we were now, but it was very short-lived. And what time was that? That was at 12.30. Okay, so that was midday. I thought it was maybe pre-market or something like that. No, Meta is a monster. We'll have to figure some sort of trade on this. Otherwise, you know, I'm not going to chase it at these levels. 484.77, the high of day, Adair. Yeah, I mean, what? It, Meta's, in, Meta's nuts. And I see what you mean about that flat bottom on, on Apple for sure. Yeah. I think it could look, looks like it could potentially... We'll see break there, but we'll have to wait and see. I do have to discuss Tesla. I got out of the Cybertruck once again. You know, it didn't work out, but again, like risk risk management, as long as you have your plans, I think it, you, you can be a little bit more comfortable taking a trade because you know, hey, if it goes against you, you got to say bye-bye. Bye, bye, bye. Shout out to NSYNC, although Tesla and I have not been in sync today, <laughs> let me tell you. Took a long, it was a short, took a short, it was a long. That's okay, though. I'm going to stay away from this name for right now till I have another opportunity. But like I said, we kind of made that, that high out of that area of resistance earlier, I got out. Looks like we could be kind of going down in this again, in which case I might range it, but I want to be very cognizant and very cautious before I get back in. I also did, I want to address this, I did DCA here, because uh, at that VWAP struggle, uh, VWAP struggle, but I didn't add too much. So, and that was also kind of planned, like if we struggled at VWAP, to add just a little bit there. So that was the look on that. It's bad, LOL, asking about sound, sound hound. Um, what do I see in the sound hound chart? Okay. What I see in the soundhound chart is interesting. I like this chart. There's a lot I see on this chart, actually. So double top-ish for uh, this 420 area. Ha, 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 ha. I haven't wanted to address it. But not. this is all in the pre-market, this double top. So we had this uh, first hit, 8 a.m., second hit, 9.15. Then, other than that, though, this VWAP hold was really interesting in the pre. We open, we fall below with a viciousness, and then we come into that early area from which we pop that 355. Ah. And that becomes a scotch of a top. And then we have these, this bottom at 320. I see a lower high, I see a lower high, and I see a new lower high. Now, I, you know, with, with these small caps, 
it's always kind of a risky look, but I would say I would be very cognizant of this one as we get to that 320 because it could be a flat bottom break here on the five minute. Also, this is an interesting one. This was an NVIDIA investment. Okay. NVIDIA having um, a position in this name along with NNOX. Uh, I wish I can pull up that one as well here. But I think, oh, this sound how daily chart's interesting too. We did have this... Um, Quite a pop here. Earlier area of this 230 being a sticking point. Second day, nice pop to the upside here for sound. And Knox, let's see how we're doing on this one. Ooh, okay, this is also a really nice pop. Again, sort of a pseudo area of resistance here, that $7 area, um, once, twice, kind of curling down, and then a bit of a bounce. This bottom, we, we touched this bottom of 530, like three times. Then we have this nice pop to the upside. Let's zoom out to get some other levels here for Ninox. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a little bit hard to we're kind of in the we're kind of in the little middle of nowhere here. However, I do think it's interesting that we kind of get this wick up into this um what is this? This 14 area, which was that earlier bottom and then reject again. I don't know the extent of this, which is like a dark pool, but oh no, this, this was legit. Okay, so this was did not look like a dark pool. This was actual buying and selling. It looks a little bit head and shoulders to me now, but not to me, honestly, I'm gonna be honest, not as clear of a single to me, or signal, sorry, as what Soundhound is giving, which is looking flat bottom breaky at that 320. Hope that helps. I think it's a very fascinating um, chart, Soundhound. Uh, and Knox a little bit less so, but both, um, as Jerry always says, these small caps live their life oh, and then yeah. they fade into um, oblivion and I think <laughs> both of these look like they might be there's time when the spotlight might be coming to an end yeah and this apple trade might be coming to an end as well because we're awfully close we're gonna trigger right now it looks like because uh, we're on our way to 15 I have my stop at 15s it's got to cross 15s though with about a two penny buffer so I'm expecting a stop out any minute now on AAPL, and that's fine. We have to, we'll give back some of the money there. We're still profitable on it though. Here is what everybody is yelling at, S-I-E-N, up big, 410%. It momentarily take, took 100 there, got into 115, dollar 15 is 100. It momentarily took a dollar and went to 115. Now it is on its way back down below one dollar, trying to hold up at 90 pennies. Let me give you details on this name. It's traded about 82 million shares on the day with an 11 million dollar market cap. The float is larger-ish, but not I guess not larger-ish for a, a penny stock like this. It is 10.8 10, um, 10 million shares on uh, SIEN. Let's see what the short float is. If any, shout out to the NOS boss and his crew. Yikes. All right, let's pull it up, SIEN. Yeah, big actually, not bad, 12.11% of the float is short, so definitely not negligible. So we could definitely get a squeeze at some point in the day if we didn't have it already. Yesterday we closed out at, I think, 18 pennies and we got to $1.15. So it's been an aggressive move so far. It is halted, I believe, to the downside again here. Am I wrong? Yeah, it is, I'm pretty sure it's halted. It just left my scanner, because yeah, it is halted at 83 pennies. The reason it got off my scanner and I couldn't see is because I filter everything below 85 pennies on my scanner. So the reason I put 85 pennies as a line in the sand is if it's coming close to that dollar, I want like a little bit of a heads up before it approaches the buck because there's often a trade to be had at the dollar level with these small cap gappers, whether you short them in, in approaching a dollar or whether you take them long once they hold the dollar. So several traits to be had um, near that dollar area that are quite specific to small cap gappers, right? So SIEN, continue to watch that. It's giving up the ghost now. I don't like any of the small cap gappers on the day at the moment, Adara. Not CHNR. Not FFIE, not NNOX or JXJT. That was the monster mover this morning. Even PLCE was a monster. They're all trading below VWAP at the moment, and oh, except for SIEN, that's still above VWAP, VWAP at 70 cents. So none of them, for me, are tradable. I'm going to stay clear of the small cap gappers today unless something sets up a little bit better. Maybe we'll look at the future. Let's actually have a look at the future because we had a great trade possible here at that 17.8 dip. So we dipped below 17.8. We actually held it initially here at around 10 o'clock, rejected VWAP, bounced back up, rejected VWAP again, and we dipped a lot further this time around 17.780 through that 17.8 level, but we reclaimed it again, but all the while, 
putting in sequentially lower highs and lower lows here on the future. So feels bearish until we can definitely change that trend around. Uh, we'll have to wait and see whether that can come to fruition or not. So um, interesting, interesting look here. Still about eight pennies out of the money on AAPL, but now it's coming back down into that 181 mid 90s area. I'm gonna pack my patience. I didn't get stopped out. So it did come into 15s, but it didn't cross. And that's why we didn't get uh, the stop order there. But what I am concerned with is this, you know, it, it made a new high, albeit very, very minuscule new high over here on AAPL. We'll pack our patience, we'll see what happens. Yeah, AAP, AAPL actually looks kind of rangy there when you were mentioning that minuscule new high. I right? would have to look at her for a very different reason. And this oh. goes back not to not to be the person talking about, you know, again, bringing it back to the lesson, but we're, we will. Um, okay. I think what's interesting, too, is, is it shows, like we said, like you can have different reasons for entering. Everyone's going to have their own thesis for entering a trade, right, as long as you have your plan for that trade. Now, I like Dang. this Apple short, um, honestly, just to this flat bottom of one. 81.60, so I think I'm gonna take this, actually. We're gonna get in a little bit above here. Let's go. Um, and then my out is gonna be, again, this breakout of this new uh, high. I'm probably gonna give it like, what, this like 182.20. We'll give it about 20 cents here, um, should we get this. I might have set my point of entry too high. It's a couple cents above that 182, but we're gonna have to see. We're giving it about 18, 20 cents for about a 40 penny winner. So I'm okay with that risk reward, I do have to say. Um, so there we go. So I, I like that we're, you know, we're both hanging out in these Apple positions. Mm. Good times. Yeah, we rarely trade the same stocks we, like ever. Yeah, like it's very rare. And yeah. I find, like I was saying too, usually when we do, it's for, for different reasons. Because you've been involved in this sure. a lot longer and you've got that flat yeah. bottom break in mind. I will get the flat bottom and then I will say bye-bye. Okay. So you know what I mean? So it's slightly different. Um, and I think that's interesting too, right? Like people can see different things for, for different reasons and want right. to trade things for different reasons. And so that's my little uh, speech du jour, I suppose. Also, <laughs> I want to address this kind of rough IWM short I was in. Uh, it was an IW miss for me personally. Um, <laughs> But I, I'll talk about it. Um, basically, the goal with this, and I know, you know in retrospect, it looks like I bought into a falling knife here. I watched this for a while. We were really struggling with that 201.80. And I say that also, A, because, you know, we're near VWAP, so that could have been confluence. But B, like, we had these failed wicks up into VWAP. We kept coming down. I like the look. It held up for about 0.2 seconds, then got out. I got out exactly where I wanted to, which was that earlier area of top and churn just above VWAP, just above that 202. I said sayonara, that's okay. Um, you know what I mean? Again, really just, you know, like we said, risk management, not always gonna be glamorous, always going to be very necessary for um, your sanity and your trading health. Uh, so there we go, that's my, that's my little spiel there. In Apple, pretty, pretty, I mean, I don't have much to report in Apple right now, just kind of chilling in that name. Looking for some rangy opportunities. I'm seeing K Debs in the chat bring out Disney. So let's see how the House of Mouse is doing. A name that you were trading recently this week yeah. as well, I believe. Yeah, that was a tough trade. Yeah, that was the, that's the one that I um, was impulsive into. Yes, thank you, remind me. That was a tough one. We had to fight with that one to get to get break even. Sorry yeah, to interrupt you. Yeah, did, no, it's okay. Disney moves like weirdly. I've noticed yeah. that as well. Like you can think you see a thing, and it's like actually no, no, you don't. <laughs> but um, but Disney, this this Disney view up bounce is interesting. But we're really getting into this area of earlier. I don't want to say resistance, but it was certainly an earlier high that we struggled with. Right, this one twelve forty. We get up there. We have these two wicks to the downside. Make a teeny tiny trough and then bounce back up. This is not something I would be getting involved in right now, but I think it's certainly an interesting look. If we fall from here, not saying that we will, but if we do, I'm going to be really cognizant of that eleven. Uh, 111.70 because that was where we had the earlier pop and then also of course that 111.93 where we had this nice little troughish bottom. Amen. Let's look at the daily chart as well. Also, did you see Ramin in the chat? 20 outfits, 20 trades, hard eyes. I guess because we both have the dark blue. <laughs> oh, I didn't even notice oh, that. Even okay, notice okay. That. Look at that. Look at that. All right, Ram Ram. Uh, shout know. out there. Much appreciated. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, this, Disney, I, uh, this is another one where it's kind of harder to find levels, much like Meta, and where it's sort of a blue sky setup. But this yeah. um, this 113 area, we did wick into and then fail. So we could be coming into an area of potential resistance on the daily for D to the I to the S. Also, you know, shout out to, I think it was um, Joanna Brewster earlier saying um, we had a, that Meta breakout. So shout out, uh, I think she wanted to pump it for Meta, so I shall Bam. say pump it. Oh, yeah. Bam. <laughs> I can't do it right. Okay. Um, for for Meta, yeah, I mean, all I have to say here, my only chart analysis is wow. I wish that we, I was going to say like, oh, that, that 90 MA dip was easy to buy into earlier. But Meta's like, what dip? Just rip. So congrats to Meta. Congrats to you, Joanna Brewster. Anybody else involved in this name? Yes. Really good look. Uh, congrats to everybody. What, what, what a day. This has been s such a day here. Uh, I'm going to go monitor Apple and see how that one is um, bobbing around, hopefully, to the all downside. Right. 
I'm going to look at uh, OPEN Open here for a big Nick Dub uh, saying, want me to look at this one coming into earnings. Let me just see when the earnings on this bad boy is. February 15th, today. So it's after the bell today, 4 p.m. on OPEN. Let's have a look at, this is the weekly chart, guys, by the way. Just couldn't see the full picture on the daily. As you can see, like many other stocks that were trading during the pandemic, you know, we seem to have peaked out there in late or, sorry, um, early 2021, late 2022. We attempted again another peak, but a lower high this time around uh, September of 2021. Since that time, though, it's been tough going here for OPEN, bottoming out, almost becoming a penny stock, uh, holding up, I believe, over a buck. The worst time it had, I think, was December of 2022. So now let's look at the daily on OPEN. Let me bring down uh, the ticker so everybody can see it. Dang it. All right, there we go. So... Nick, we made that high in August at around five and a quarter, and then we made a lower high, but we also have a higher low. So a bit of a compression pattern where you're getting lower highs and higher lows. I don't know how this resolved. This is a really tough one uh, to chart, but what's nice about this bottom over here that we have at around three and a quarter is that it coincides, number one, with a previous bottom that we had during August and September of last year. And it also coincides with the high that we made in February of last year. So that level coming into play multiple times. So it's acting as an interesting support level, despite the fact that it gave up the ghost over here. Um, yeah, this one is tough. I don't know anything fundamentally about the company, uh, but the chart is definitely hard to gauge where it's gonna go just simply because of this lower high over here. You could have made the case for it to be, you know, if we had if this high over here at around 475 was a high around six, then you could say, okay, well, we're putting in higher lows and we're putting in higher highs. Looks like we're recovering from that trend. In addition to that, look at the umpteen amount of crossovers between the 50 and the 200. What does that signal to you? That signals a consolidative move. That's why moving averages are next to useless during consolidative markets because they trigger all these false signals. Oh, great, we got the golden cross. Oh, no, we got a death cross. Oh, great, we got a golden cross. And then we got another death cross. So, yeah, so the point is, this is hard to gauge. What's, what's probably better in this particular scenario is to use some sort of oscillator, right? Oscillators typically perform better during consolidative markets than moving averages. Uh, I don't have that. I have on balance volume open on here just from yesterday, so I won't be able to look at it for you. But yeah, I, I, sadly, I can't really give you uh, an assessment on how I feel this chart looks because of the consolidative nature. It's really going to have to break out of the highs here at 550 and come something closer to six. And I don't know anything fundamentally about the company either. So not much that I can add there. Look at Meta. Oh my goodness, Meta, what is happening? Ooh. I'm in the wrong name today, Adara. 488 just got taken like it doesn't even matter. Guys, the closing print on Meta yesterday was 473. We're $15 higher than that already. And you know, the market is doing bupkis. In fact, the NQ's down a quarter of a percent. Meta wouldn't know it, right? Meta doesn't know anything about you know, the market being down a quarter point today. It is on its way to 500 bucks. Meta has been an absolute rocket ever since that monster earnings beat now, Adara, up 3% on the day, overtaking Tesla as the number one mix of a name. Tesla lagging now about 285 yeah, I think Meta is in its own version of the Mark Zuckerberg bunker in where it does not know what the rest of the market's doing, but it's having a pretty good time. Um, so, you know, that that's what I have to say there uh, with Meta. That, that Only thoughts. Good luck on that. Also, I did enter another Meg 7 short. Uh, Microsoft, to me, this chart looks almost identical to that of Apple. We have that slightly, slightly higher low, but general an area of resistance. I'm really just scalping this out at this bottom, saving a piece for the dream for that mm. lower bottom of that 40450. But this is a really tiny trade. I'm um, getting out at, if we get above that 40520 area, giving this about 20 pennies. Like basically the exact same thesis, exact same risk parameters, exact same ideas uh, in terms of profit and loss that I have with Apple, uh, which might make it boring, but um, at least it's consistent. You know what Fair. I mean? Your mind's in the same set. Also. 
And yes, I, I may kick myself for this. I'm not getting involved yet. But this this Tesla 194 bounce, or not bounce, but like we're waffling here. This could get interesting. If we have a decisive break of 194, I may short it just to that. Uh, take a piece out of you up, take the rest of 193.10. Because like I said, that 193.10 today was spicy. spicy uh, that's all I have to all I have to say on that. Did you see Spicy P return to the to the Scotia Bank Center yesterday? No, I didn't. Yeah, he's with the Pacers, and they did like a whole welcome back type thing. I did thing. not know that. Pascal Siakam coming back as a different player. First time he spent his entire career with the Raps. I had no idea. Yeah, I'm yeah. not like, NBA is not one of the things Neither that is super... Neither is it mine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, I was never good at basketball. That's why I didn't like it. I sucked. And I Me tried. Too. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, oh my God, I, I was in... not good at basketball. Did you play like on a team or like? No, we play in the street all the time, oh, and I okay. could just tell based on you know my skill relative to everybody else's how much I sucked. So yeah. I was like, all right, let me just do something I'm good at, right? Which is football. Yeah, no, that's... I dominated that football. Uh, the yeah. the American kind. No, yeah, American. Kind. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know the running <laughs> back because back then you had to play both ways. You had to play an offensive position and a defensive. So I play uh, strong safety and running back. Nice. Yeah. That was very cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was. I, I played on a basketball school basketball team very briefly because they didn't make any cuts, and it was um, it was a time. That's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good. Yeah, you learn a lot. It taught me a little bit about the sport, but um, <laughs> also you know, some, not things are made Neil. for everybody. Neil's trying to troll <laughs> you in the chat. Of course, because he okay. Neil runs track, so Neil's fast, and that's his like you know that's his mo. Right, so obviously he's trying to flex on me right now. He's like, look, what were you running? What were you running? Your 40, what was your 40 meter? Out? We didn't do 40, Neil, because you know it was, it was all CFL rules, sadly, in high school. We had to follow Canadian football rules, which, you know. Um, so we had to run the 50 meter. And I, I forget what it was, man. It was like something like six seconds or something like that. I don't even remember. Like five, five and a half. Flat. What's that? I don't remember. Oh, this is like I'm talking like grade 12 here. Yeah, that's uh, it's a. Bi <laughs> Sharif would hit. Ah, uh, I would definitely not hit you and say sorry. Are you kidding me? I'd stand over you. <laughs> uh, I, I was a bad player. Um, Vin did the same thing too. I <laughs> like it. My 40 was between seven and eight. Yeah, I don't remember, guys. Dudes like Sharif are why I didn't play football. <laughs> All right, let's get back to trading it, Dara. What are you looking at over there? Yeah, I mean, I'm still in my two little um, mega cap longs of hanging out with um, Bill Gates and Tim Cook slash Steve Jobs. I'm um, yep. here. I'm in Microsoft and Apple. Uh, so also, too, I want to say here we have um, – there was something here. A tin block man – uh, or TNT Blockman, with this great advice to huge thanks, really helping improve my trades. But why shorting Apple when it fails to break loader? Lower, thank you so much for the the, um, the the compliment there. We really appreciate it. We're really happy to be here and, and bring some knowledge. And I think, too, I mean, I, like we said, everyone's going to be in trades for different reasons. Right. Both you and I are in Apple, so I'm yes, not. I, I know you got in a little bit earlier. You have a way so. better price, though. You have 10 cents better. But you, but you also have, like, that. you had some other beak letters on the Yeah, side. yeah, we're already profitable on it. But, yeah, uh, yeah we're, 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 look. Uh, the shorting, I, I don't want to speak for you. Yeah, well, we have our own reasons. Yeah, but uh, the reason I got short on Apple was the continuously lower highs uh, that it was putting in. Let me show you the five because it's easier uh, to show you what I mean on the five-minute look. If I can show them here, Chilean Nightmare, this uh, chart. Here we go on Apple. There's the pop, the initial bamboozlement. Everyone's like, oh, people are buying up Apple. No, you don't. Right back down we go. And then look where we bounce off. We bounce off the pivot, right? So the pivot to me, it, you know, it's been, it's been working. It's been working a lot, um, both as support as, and resistance. So we pop up off the pivot, but we don't make a higher high. And then we sell off again. We pop again off there to sell off and holding that 181.50 just above the red line, which is the support on the pivot. But we make another lower high, right? And then we test that level again, reject again off that level. So even though it may look consolidative, um, chances, you know, if the market really sells off aggressively, that I do get that 181.50, 181 and a third print. That's what I'm really looking for here. Uh, we're now 10 pennies in the money again, and it is making another attempt down. However, this one, my line in the stand is going to stay the same. If it comes into that 182.15, that's the end of the trade. I may look to get in again short, possibly, if it makes its way up to VWAP, which right now on my chart is around 182.44. So maybe around that 182.50, give or take. Maybe that even that 182 and a third. We'll have to wait and see. But what I'm looking for is continued weakness on Apple. 
in addition to the fact that, you know, if you're a big money manager or you're just, you know, a retail trader and you follow uh, the philosophy of Warren Buffett or George Soros or whoever, and you get wind that they're selling, you may be inclined to liquidate your position as well because you may be thinking to yourself, what do they know that I don't know? So there could be that, you know, lingering weakness on Apple as people find out about the news, liquidate their position, maybe funnel it into something else. So just as a general perception today on things, Apple looks weak and, you know, Warren Buffett's not nothing to sneeze at. When he sells, people take notice. And so uh, that's, that's a look there. And I'm going to wet my beak here on some more profits as we move down into the mid-70s. But, it's, uh, you know, really hoping, not hoping, but anticipating for that 50 cent touch a dara yeah yeah no i think and thank you for, for talking about that because i think you know it goes off what we were saying earlier sometimes you'll have different reasons for entering your trades and this is a trade we're both in <laughs> but with kind of different profit takers and areas of interest right so yeah. really for me to me this is and i see what you mean about it not breaking a lower low that's actually why i wanted to get in because i have a built-in profit taker right her um or right there i guess but yeah right i got her. i got part of it yeah there we go i got part of it out at that 180 180 because we were struggling a little bit uh so i i do this thing i call scalpulation for those who do not know where I like to take out, uh, I have planned out, but depending on what we do in the book, sometimes I'll piece out some of it earlier. Like if we have areas of resistance, Understood. I'll be like, and I think maybe that, that has to do with accumulation and distribution as well, right? Like what, be, uh, beyond the actual trends we're seeing, what are other areas where buyers and sellers are getting into little teeny, uh, you know, street fights, right? <laughs> so I think to me, well said. that was, thank you. I appreciate that. That's why I got out part of this position that, uh, we're out of Apple at that 180, and then that's why I kept a piece through the dream there at the bottom of that range. Please. What were you asking punch. again about Apple? <laughs> no, no, no we're, I'm kidding. We're joking. It's just yeah, about, yeah, yeah. about the thesis mm -hmm. of the trade there. Also, sorry, two, two super chats. One I just saw now. I'm so sorry. Andrew Ditter asking, um, thank you so much for the super chat. Impending Snow is the widow maker of play, UNG. Um, what's the UNG oh, on? Is that that's AM? The NAC gas ETF, the US NAC gas. It, it's uh, AM. Okay, perfect. Yeah, it's a disaster. I know you are not it's a, a fan disaster. of It's a disaster. And yeah. they reverse split too. Like this used to be like two or oh. three bucks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll look at this. Um, I I'm guessing you're probably meeting on a longer term. So I'm going to look at the daily and the weekly on this. Also, we got filled in on Microsoft. So Bang. I used his punch. All smiles. But yeah, you're right. We did that. There's a, you can tell where the reverse split was here. We went from five here to this 20 area. Whew, and then we continue to fall down. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing is, too, is I think it's a little bit harder to me because I think what, what, what you're saying makes sense on more of a, a, a fundamental level. I think with UNG, honestly, the technicals to me look a skosh dicey. Have you noticed anything about North American winters this winter? They're less cold. Not just less, it's ridiculous. Yeah, that's we, true. We don't have double digit days in February in Toronto. That doesn't exist. Yeah. Well, I don't know, you haven't lived in Toronto all your life, but that's just, it's not normal around here. No, it did and feel warm even. Yeah, me. and so the reason I think that we're getting, this is tanking is because we have an unusually warm winter, El Nino. From what I heard. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. No, and I think I think too, Andrew Ditter. I, I see what you mean, like that from a fundamental perspective. That could totally make sense. I think just hard for me, just looking at the chart on a technical level. Um, I I feel like this 19 area is kind of tricky. Uh, but I see what you mean. If you think it's a short term play, maybe that area into 19 could be interesting. Again, not advice, just a pure chart yeah. read. Uh, but also, it's hard for me to look at levels as well when we have this reverse split. So thank you for bringing that one up as well, there, yeah, yeah. Sharif. I think really just that it's a kind of a technical quagmire for me personally because there's so many little factors. Fundamentally, could be interesting, though, for a very, very short, uh, tight little trade. Also, two more super tests. Thank you so much, everybody. Willis Addison caught Apple. 183 puts um, to uh, nice. a February 23rd expiry and a little printing machine. Cisco, uh, $50 <laughs> puts. I mean, yeah, congrats to you. Let me look at I'll pull up. Well, I mean, we've been looking at Apple. Apple's a good look to the downside off that 183. Um, I'll, I'll pull up uh, this Cisco as well here. Uh, let's see if this one... Um, Dumped like a truck. Uh, I am this moved out. I'm sorry, I had to. Oh my god. Um, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Neil, Neil's shaking his head. I like when Neil gets involved. <laughs> He's like, nah, I didn't just hear that. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> but yeah, this um, the Cisco uh, look here. We had this kind of this flattish top at this 49 area. Yeah, 50 was a 50 was a good look here on that move down because we have not even really eclipsed that. Uh, since the earnings, it looks like we had this move down, 
looks pretty solid. Let me look at the daily here. Yeah, congrats to you, Willis Addison. Uh, sounds like a print factory over there indeed. Bang. And also, I just want to point this out in the daily. This 47.50 bottom is certainly something else. Also, yeah, this whole Cisco chart has me like way too interested. This 47 and a half ish bottom is insane. Then we we kind of had this little bit of a stutter step to an extent, but this 53 area is nuts. We kind of top it out twice, and we had a little bit of a support there earlier. So it looks mm. like support becoming resistance. I honestly, if, the, if this was the look on the daily, I would probably, or on the intraday, I mean, I would be ranging this thing because I like this range. Um, but yeah, congrats to congrats to you, Willis Addison. Sorry, one more here. Chad GPT, again, great name, $2 Super Chat. IVP looking spiky today on offerings closing news. Okay. IVP, Inspire Veterinary Partners. Okay, let's pull up. I to the V to the P. Oh, it's a little penny stock. Okay. Um, I'm going to pull up the... Yeah, it looks like a typical penny stock on the day. That's kind of my daily chart read is, is it's a penny stock. But I mean, if I were to get more specific here, this is yet. interesting how we had that top of that 26 uh, area snowing. or sorry, 26 pennies. And we're kind of pulling back from there. So that to me, 26 pennies could be an area other than that. 34 pennies. I say that because look at this top of churn we had before that swift fall with the viciousness, with the swiftness, what have you, to the downside. My, my look is 26 and 34 based on those daily levels. Intraday, um, I would concur that it does look spiky, uh, Chet GPT. Uh, like, I, I think, honestly, my levels are going to be what I said on the daily, Fair. that 26, uh, 34. Yeah. All right. Um, I believe Alan wanted me to look at V. TNR saying he's uh, holding this bad boy here for a swing into earnings. So let's number f first and foremost, let's put in the ticker so people can follow along. VTNR is the ticker. Uh, VTNR. I don't know anything about this uh, stock. So let me look at it first of all. Vertex Energy, $166 million market cap. They're an energy transition company specializing in refining and marketing high value conventional and low carbon alternative transport fuels. Huh, sounds noble, I like that. Float, 82 million shares, not that that really matters because we're talking about a swing into earnings. So look, Alan, I mean, you, you, you can see the chart, I don't need to tell you. Obviously we are at multi-year lows here. Uh, last time we were at this level, we got to go all the way back into February, 2021. Uh, but lately we did find a bit of a bottom I'd say at a buck and a third, give or take, generally that area, uh, a buck and a third, curling back up a little bit here. But, you know, a lot of the things that you want to see, Alan, into earnings, you're not seeing. You're not at the 50. You're certainly not at the 200. Um, in addition to that, prior earnings were met with aggressive selling. Look what happened here. Um, or this was an earnings date. Sorry, excuse me. The, any pops into the 50 period is what I'm trying to say. We're met with aggressive selling. Look at the pop back here in June into the 50, sold off. The pop again to September and again in October. And you guessed it, again in December. Every time it seems to pop into the 50 moving average, it sells off. So one thing I personally want to see from a technical level, let's claim that 50 on a closing basis. Instead of this constant moving into the 50, and then you sell off again. That's number one. Number two, both moving averages that I'm using, whether the 50, whether the 200 Ram Ram, they're both pointing downward. They're not pointing upward. So I don't really have the, you know, the inclination that we could start seeing a curl up here. So I'm gonna, I definitely need to see more um, from a technical level. Again, don't know anything about their fundamental position, whether with respect to, to PE, whether to cash flow, what, what have you. Nothing there, just looking from a completely technical perspective. What I'd be looking for though, Alan, if we do pop up, number one, do we break that two and a quarter, two and a third? Because that's where the 50 EMA is on my chart. I need to reclaim that, that's number one. Number two, if we reclaim that two and a quarter, two and a third, I'm looking right over here. I'm looking at that three, because three is a clear area of resistance. We bottomed out there, popped back up into the 50 and then tanked. So I wanna see whether three, number one is a psychological uh, resistance level. In addition to that, there is a previous area of support at it. So it makes it a bit more, uh, you know, jives a little bit more in my book. So two and a quarter, two and a third, that general area clearing on a closing basis. I want a daily candle closing above there and not just a wick above and then a wick down like we've been getting on uh, all these pops back into the 50. So that's my look there. I hope it helps. Again, I don't know anything specific to the company from a fundamental perspective. He says, so watch the 50 and the 200 noted. Thank you so much. I'm only risking like $200 in call options, but I'm thinking this time 
could go hard if earnings are favorable. Hey, man, I wish you the best, and I hope you absolutely print on it. Um, but And let me know. Let me know how it goes as well. Um, I'd love to shout you out here as a winner. No question about that. What are you looking at, Adair? Uh, right now, I honestly, you know, I... I'm kind of looking at a potential Apple long, but I, I still yeah, think Apple's so a short longer term. No, I'm not trying to like... Not I, you. It is annoying. It keeps flat bottoming at 181.60. Go ahead. Well, yeah, no, sorry. Because yeah. my thing is, too, is I, I say that and I'm like, you know, I know because you're in the short, but I really, I'm just looking at this like a range play, right? Back into mm. that 182. Um, but I think I might have missed my opportunity on that. Like I said, though, Apple and Microsoft moving in tandem gives me not one, but two ranges to um to annoyingly stock. So, no, I just, I'm just, you know, stocking um. these ranges here. But I think this is, uh, you know, if we come back into this, 40450. I'll probably get the dip on this. Take it to 405. Both of these though could break at any moment, which is why I think taking the long side of these ranges is dicey because I oh do think God. Apple and Microsoft generally look more short. All right, guys, here we go. You guys ready for a very important trading news? Kylian Mbappe is leaving Paris Saint Germain. It's over. The marriage between Mbappe and uh, the Parisian club is all over. He has now let them know. He will be leaving in July. Uh, this rep is reported by Fabrizio. Anybody who in soccer knows exactly who Fabrizio is, it's all over, and he likely will be going to Real Madrid. This is not, we all knew that this was going to happen, but you know, they were really trying to hold on to this guy. He is the best player in the world, and that's what you do with the best player. You try to hold on to them. Kylian Mbappe, see you later, Paris. All right. Let's see what we got over here. Yeah, Hala Madrid, everybody's Hala Madrid, Hala Madrid. Um, Tesla's pumping though, Adair. Oh you gosh. watching this? Yeah. Here comes 195.76. We're about 40 pennies off high a day right now on TSLA as Meta and Tesla continue to fight for who is going to be the largest or the most up, I mean, on the day in Mag 7 world. Meta curling back a little bit now below 487, but you, would te you wouldn't know it if you looked at Tesla. Tesla is on its way into resistance level one on the pivots. That's exactly where we topped out last time, right at that resistance level one, but we're making a, another attempt at it. 195.50 is where that is on my chart. I'm talking about the teal dotted line that is the resistance level one on pivots. Wanna move up off that 192.50 dip buy. I kept looking at Tesla, I'm like, get long, get long, go, go with a small amount, but uh, you know, I, I didn't, so that sucks to be me. But Tesla awfully strong right now. V-shaped recovery off that dip, and Tesla continues to move up Adara. Yeah, I think you might. I think your Apple flat bottom break is is incoming. I got involved in this on a dip. Uh, yeah, I, I hope for you. This is I have a really tight point of entry here. Uh, if we break this flat bottom, I'm saying bye bye. Yeah. So we're giving it roughly ten. 15 cents. Uh, my profit takers, I already have one set, 181.90 area, basically these earlier highs, and then my last one just above that 182. But honestly, it looks like this, the range play is over. It looks like this is a nice short. So very much congratulations to you. Yeah, uh, Should you. this come through, because it looks like it looks like this getting dicey. But for now, though, the only real deal is the one you're going to see with Neil right over there. So real deal, Neil. Welcome to The Real Deal today. What do you do when Man. a stock is oh, going oops. absolutely right. crazy? Yeah, it's good. moving too much. Uh, you don't feel confident trading it. You feel like you're going to get stopped out. It's just a moving freight train, but you know the opportunity is there. What you can do is trade the sympathy play. A lot of times, people are always looking for the most exciting name. What is the best thing out there, the biggest gapper, the highest volume? But the other thing you can just look for is maybe the simpler trade. What if you can use that volume, that volatility, that price action, that news to your advantage trading something which is just along for the ride? So first you got to establish a few ground rules here as to what is or is not a sympathy play. And you got to have something moving profoundly, ideally on news or just because of some technical reason. So today there is one example uh, as, we're as we're shooting this. We got DWAC. The deal finally has a date. Are they actually going to make this conversion? Yeah, OK, apparently at some point they're going to. But you're gapping up. It's a huge runner, closed in the low 40s. And then you can see at the open, it was already gapped and then made a big breakout uh, early in the day. It was holding near 57. So you're talking about something which has already moved 30% uh, overnight and breaking back toward the highs at the open. 
The spread's going to be bigger. The volume's going to be through the roof. It's running on its own. It's not like trading where you can follow uh, socks if you're in a, in, a, in a chip name or you can follow the cues if you happen to be in a mag seven name and just get an idea of what the market is doing as well. This one is its own market, which is good because it means it can give you that big move and that big volatility. So first you've got to identify something that moves with it. The good news is, typically speaking, we know with DWAC, a couple of things that move with it are fun wear, um, and sometimes you can even get rumble going. So you got to have, you got to have a reason, like in, in this case, I just observed it in the past, and a lot of people have observed it in the past. Then you want to see, is the relationship holding true? Okay, so you, make the new, you get the news at about 8 o'clock. This breaks out at 8.15. If you look at it, this is just breaking out at the same level, not quite as parabolic, but it breaks at the same time, so it's following along. You actually get DWAC making one high, when Funware is making this high at 33, then it makes at the open another top of 57. Now this is where it gets fun. See what I did there? Uh, this is where I like this setup even more. Funware doesn't have the direct news here. So anything that's going, anything that's positive for DWAC is yes, yeah, gonna drag Funware higher, but if there's a lack of continuation in DWAC, you might be able to get a trade here. Because as you're making the second top, hey, what happens here? Funware breaks its high. So breaks that local high at the same time. DWAC fades underneath. Now is making a lower high at the open. Funware at the open is at the previous high. So now you've got an interesting setup because DWAC's got clear resistance at 57, and that's the leader. The follower has overextended itself. And you can be short off the previous level where DWAC was going at 33 and a quarter. And even if you take the conservative approach, where you short it underneath here and only give it to that lower high, or you give it to 57 breaking, or you give it to that top, all of those roads work. But you've got to remember, I want to see a few things happening here. It's got to be following alongside the other name. The other name has got to be the leader. I need a past history of that behavior. Then I want to have the confluence of a clear rejection or change of direction in the leader and a clear entry point that I can apply in the follower. So that's what the sympathy play is all about. You're just looking to see a turn, a break, something that you can sink your teeth into where you now have two reasons why I like to get into fun wear to the south side. And it would have worked the other way too. If you had broken the highs at 57, on DWAC, then I would have liked Funware as well. Now, does it always, does it always have to be a um, small flow? No, it doesn't. Sometimes it can just be one name is leading an entire sector and it has nothing to do with its strength in the sector. SMCI. SMCI is now the poster child for the AI and chip boom. NVIDIA of course gets a lot of the headlines because of what they're doing uh, from a fundamental standpoint, but if you've been trading recently, it's SMCI that takes the cake. It's a triple up in a month. It just continues to run higher and higher and higher, and how rapidly this is moving up. It's got 11% short float. It gives you that um, FOMO that a lot of traders are, are gonna be able to get when they see a stock running like this. Now, where can you take advantage of this? If this is squeezing higher, and it has that emotional, uh, psychological feel of leading that AI chip trend, then you can play this looking for extreme moves in SMCI to be able to get reactionary plays in both NVIDIA or maybe in AMD. So if you look at what was happening after the open, it danced around a bit, eventually settled into an upward trend here at about 9.50. There's something very obvious that happens when this gets to 970. Very, very obvious. You guys can see it here. It was a hammer move. It tried to break the high, make a new high of the day, wicked the same top, and rejected the VWAP in a single candle. This is a three-minute chart. You can put up a one or a two, and you'd see that that got down there about $25 very, very rapidly, right here at just before 11 o'clock on SMCI. Now, what happened in AMD? This happened in AMD. Look at 10, exact same time when it's trying to get that fresh high, 
AMD puts in a lower high and then flushes. Now, where this gets even better for a sympathy play than Funware and DWAC is you can identify that AMD is relatively weak compared to SMCI to begin with. SMCI was making lower highs. AMD was already, sorry, SMCI was making higher lows and higher highs, but AMD was making lower highs and lower lows. And on top of that, if you were just trading without looking at SMCI, what might you have wanted to do? 178. There's a lower high. It holds once, it holds twice, it's holding a third time. When we talk about confluence or having multiple reasons to get into, tr to, into a trade, this is what we mean. You've got something which has been a bit of a leader in the space, finding resistance and pulling back. You then have a stock which is already trending down and showing you a key level that you can short off of. So you've got three things to like for AMD instead of two. Leaders falling, AMD's already trending. At the point of the turn, you have a resistance level on AMD at 128. So sometimes trading the sexiest name or executing on the sexiest name isn't always the way to go because you can find yourself some more simplistic setups on something which is not the leader but could just be a follower and is going to react to said leader. I always, I always like to use the analogy, if I'm going to give you a point uh, for every bucket that you're going to hit when you play hoops, and I can tell you, go up against LeBron James, go up against me, or go up against a random person off the street. Nobody's going to actually play LeBron James unless you're trying to pad the ego or have a lifetime story to talk about because you're just getting paid per bucket. So sometimes it's not about trading or going up against that crazy high flyer or the name that's leading the market. If you can find a sympathy play, you're going to be able to simplify your trading. That's the real deal. And at the end of the day, you're just here for profits. So keep it simple, stupid. Oh, sorry about that, Bram Ram. But uh, I got excited because he said Kimple, keep it simple, stupid. So, you know, you know, I just hit the banks. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you very much, Neil, for that informative uh, discussion and very insightful as always Adara while near was drop while Neil was dropping hot lines Apple did pop up yet again off that flat bottom at 181 and uh, Ram Ram uh, 181 and two thirds and here it goes again into 182 nothing changes on my trade my stop is still in the same place 182 16 that will be the new high if it makes a new high I'm gone Zeno um, and looking to possibly reshort somewhere else. This is awfully, this is turning into a, you know, one of the best range trades on the day. And that is my uh, cup of tea. So if it, I'd rather just get stopped out and look for something a bit more momentum uh, driven. And that looks to be Tesla at the moment. At highs, just printed a new high, 195.76 just reach resistance level one on pivots. This is where it topped out last time, right where we are here. So can we get some continuity through this particular level? Um, and if we do get continuity, are we gonna come back and test it as a level of support? That's what I'll be looking for. That's more my trading style. I'd rather not take it through as a breakout trade. I don't like those trades. I want confirmation that the level is the real deal, shout out to Neil, and then come back in near and around that level and then we may get long. New high of day right now on Tesla as it comes into 196, 195, low 90s right now. It is above the, the initial crest that we got to at around uh, 1025, 1030 last time around. The th thing for me is, do we see continuity? I need to see more continuity. Well, maybe we'll look for that whole dollar at 196. We'll see if we get any resistance there. But Tesla, the monster on the day, 3.84% looking to go four, baby. It's overtaken Meta now by one whole percentage point. It is in the lead in Meg7 world. So Tesla pumping up. Um, and we're gonna have to we're gonna have to figure a way possibly into that trade because it off it looks awfully strong on the day. The one that I have to nurse at the moment is this Apple trade as it is near my stop yet again. We were able to wet our beak here on multiple profit outs, one, two, three, four profit outs um, near the low end of the range, but right back up we go. And you know I'm not inclined to short again at this level, even though I, I'm kind of predicting it's going to be the best range trade of the day. Just because 
This isn't my cup of tea and I want to stay in my wheelhouse. If it comes down to flat bottom brakes, fantastic. Otherwise, I'll just get stopped out and look for something that is within my wheelhouse. And I'm awfully close here to getting stopped out. We're showing 15s here on the ask. If it crosses 16s and we start seeing 17s on the ask, that's going to be the end of it. And you're going to see that position get removed off the board, Adara. Yeah, I mean, this this Apple has been, as you said, the range trade of the day, and you know who liked that. Oh, yeah. Me. Um, so, yeah, I was I, I got short. I got long. We got short again. I am a little bit nervous because, as Sharif said, we're coming up a little bit. Yep. I know your point of that exit's going to be if you see 17s. I'm watching for 20s just because I have a little bit of a smaller position here uh, that gives me about 15 cents. Fair. You know where my exit's going to be. It's where we have all these little triangles. Oh. Um, I'm going to be getting out around that uh, 180, 160. Cool 40-cent-ish short on the sim. Um, and like you know, like we said too, I think it, it, I think what you just said is a testament to what we're talking about with this lesson as well. Like right? kind of having risk management and knowing knowing what you like and planning the trades yeah. accordingly. And you know, you were like. I, the way you say that you feel about range is the same I feel about trends. Like the trends, like it's not, it's not really my my wheelhouse. It's not my right. move. I feel a little bit, you know, nervous trading them, and we get 20s. Right. So let's see that. what we do here. But it looks like we're gonna have to. Oh, we, we rejected at 20s here. Okay, nice look here. I feel like a stock auctioneer again. <laughs> Shout out to the person in the chat who was saying that. But I think it is gonna probably have to be time to um, let go no. of that apple. Drop it like Isaac Newton in gravity, because this trade sure did not fall. To the downside, that's okay. If the range comes back, we shall range once again. Um, the Microsoft broke way more steadily out of the range than Apple, because like I said, these two are behaving really similarly um, to me. Uh, but this this Microsoft range break to me is a lot more decisive than the Apple range break. Apple has been in a word waffly. We also did leave Apple, and now it looks like we're rejecting back, so it looks like I could have stayed. But again, like you know, I think it's just a testament to what we were saying. Risk management matters for a reason. Um, and yeah, there we go. Uh, that's the look here. Carson Berglund saying lift is very tempting to short. Ooh, okay. Let's see. It looks like guess we didn't get a lift to the upside. <laughs> also, I have to address um, what the lift CEO was saying about, you know, that margin thing yesterday. So basically, the lift CFO uh, had to come out on on two or yeah, on, on when they did their earnings after market on Tuesday. So the lift CFO was like, yeah, basically um, the margin guidance was supposed to be. Uh, for EBITDA margin guidance, it was supposed to be growth of 50 basis points. They accidentally put out 500 basis yes. points. Yes. The CEO's Crazy. response was um, an extra zero slipped in there. Um, yeah, this, the actual quote was, it's a terrible thing. It is an extra zero that slipped into a press release. Which to me, you know what, sounds like, like you know how you like you can fat finger a trade? Yeah. It sounds like they fat fingered an earnings report, <laughs> but they're being far too casual. Like even if I fat finger, I'll be like, oh, that's my bad, I fat fingered. It's not like an extra zero slipped into my Tesla. What I don't understand is that how does that get past legal, right? Because they really need to restrict everything he's saying because there's going to be like a, a plethora of litigation that's going to ensue, like a torrent of litigation that's mm. going to, because people are going to be punching in at those levels expecting that number to be accurate. And they should probably get, you know, a grip on what he says and, you know, so they can kind of forego any issues with oh. litigation there. But we'll have to wait and see. That's not my problem. Yeah. All right, long <laughs> Uber, about 20 pennies in the money now as it, it's it's headed to 81. Uh, we're, we're looking to scalp on this one. It's not the biggest position. Stopped out of the other Apple position, so we give up a little bit, about 40% uh, I was holding at the time. We give up about 15, uh, sorry, actually about 20 pennies on that last little move there up on Apple. So we give back some money. That's no question about that. Now we're going to be looking for um, de-risking in the face of the whole dollar here on UBER. It's a good move today on Uber. People are talking about what the hell is going on with Uber. And, well, yeah, it looks like something is um, somebody is positioning into this. And this is um, the what I see here. UBS raising price target on Uber from 94 to 96. Not really much of a headline there. As that's not much of a... An upgrade, but then there is RBC Capital Markets as well, uh, increasing their price target to 85 bucks on Uber. Who else was talking about Uber today? UBS, I already mentioned that one. So there's Uber, there's, uh, sorry, there's UBS, there is um, RBC, anybody else? JP Morgan, JP Morgan chiming in as well, raising their price target to 95 from 84. That's a bit more like it. So three comments on Uber today likely as a result of the earnings play from Lyft um, and, you know, the information that they gave with respect to demand for ride-hailing and 
you know, food delivery and all that kind of stuff. So we'll have, well, Lyft doesn't do food delivery, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, moving up here into the mid 90s, looking for that print around 95s, but being met with some resistance here on Uber two and a quarter to the good Adara. Uh, I'll send it to you while I just set up for the lesson that we're about to start any minute now. Yeah, we're gonna take uh, a, a little Uber moment here to recuperate before <laughs> recuperate. Or they didn't, oh, they worked that wow. in my head. Um, but before we get on to the new lesson, I like this meta little flaggish area. We could break out, but really what I like is the range here. I know, shocking, I'm looking at another range trade plot. No, I'm joking. But I find, like, you know, we have to, you have to know what kind of style you're saying. As Sharif was saying, like, you know, that, that the Apple range was not really uh, your cup of tea. Uh, and I, like, I'm the same. Like, that that Uber trend looks fantastic. Great job Stronger, with those beak wetters. Yeah. That's not something I would have really, you know, known how to trade, Tesla right, in terms too, of profit yeah. takers. Tesla's yeah. doing the same thing. Yeah. Basically, I have a, a resting um, order here from this 486.50. Should we get that, we're going to range it. I'll DCA if we hold 486. I'm going to take it up and down this range into 487, almost mm. 468. Or 488. Oh my gosh, meta at 488. Kind of broke my brain there, as you can tell. <laughs> um, and then maybe we'll save a piece for the dream for potential breakout. Uh, but really, if I can get into this out of this range, I will have no complaints. Fair. So that we're going to have to wait and see if that comes to fruition. Tesla. Whoo! I honestly, higher lows, higher highs. I would not short this just because I don't really know where it would go from here. Uh, but wow, we we completely pushed back that that pretty noticeable top and tail candle on that not one just above that 195 area here. Yeah, I mean, no no words except for uh, bamp it. And we're gonna have to see if this continues. Um, this honestly, I wouldn't really know where to buy the dip on here. Although if we bounce off this 195.20, could be interesting. Resistance becoming support, but I'm gonna have to, to wait. Now we have uh, a bigger order on the other side of 81. We're sitting at 81.05. Let's see if we get that fill. I am looking at DCA, which for all my new people out there, dollar cost average, which means adding to a position. Yeah, oh, sorry about that, Ram Ram. I didn't mean to upset you there. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, DCA's dollar cost average, looking to get a better, um, yeah, better price essentially. And for a hold of a key support level, I'm looking at this level here around 80.50 to hold the support. We'll wait and see. I've got it up on my side chart. So if this starts going south, I'm gonna have to interrupt the lesson. Speaking of which, Let's start the lesson, baby. Risk management and trade sizing is what we're talking about today. Obviously, within the overall broader context of accumulation and distribution, we've been talking about that all week. We'll finish off the last lesson tomorrow. So identifying accumulation and distribution patterns, that's just the first step. The real test lies in navigating these phases with responsible risk management and optimal trade sizing. Let's explore the key five the key principles that fit into this heading. So, risk management fundamentals. First one: always have a stop loss. This order automatic. In case you're wondering what a stop loss is, if you're new, this order automatically sells your position if the price goes against you, limiting obviously your potential losses. Think of it again. I want to use this example as your financial airbag in case you know things go awry. Okay, and stop losses. You need to acquaint yourself with them because there's different types. There's market orders. There's limit orders. You need to know what kind of stop loss you're using and what time, especially because certain stop loss, certain orders don't work outside of regular market hours. So I'm just giving you the bare bones here. It's incumbent upon you to do more research. So always have a stop loss. After that, define your risk tolerance. So this is the maximum percentage of your overall account you're willing to risk on any one single trade. Be honest with yourself, this isn't about bragging rights. Invest or uh, trade with what you can afford to lose and don't go, you know, I don't want to give you life advice, but only what you can afford to lose, I'll just leave it at that. And plan your trades before entering. This means knowing your entry point, knowing your exit point and knowing exactly where your stop loss is gonna be. Be honest, again, be honest with yourself. Emotions can cloud your judgment in the heat of the moment. That's why you should have all these orders out there to begin with and not wait for decision making uh, while, you're, while you're heated up. All right, we're printing here on Uber. So we're gonna go ahead and take some more profits here and then we're gonna put another beak wetter possibly at that uh, 20 penny area. We'll see if we get up there. Now we're coming back down to 81 to test it. We'll have to see if this level holds or not. 
you know, psychological resistance on, um, on uh, some of these names, okay? And here's a little bonus tip. Consider using a trading journal to track your trades, track your wins, to track your losses, and your emotions. Super important to know how you felt at that specific time. This self-reflection helps refine your approach and manage risk even better. And remember, risk management isn't exciting, but it is essential. It's the foundation for sustainable trading success. Take the time to understand and implement these principles and your trading journey will be a lot smoother, it will be less stressful, and potentially even more profitable. Now go forth and trade responsibly. All right, let's move on here. The next factor we need to consider is adapting your risk for accumulation and distribution, all right? So spotting accumulation and distribution patterns is great, but managing risk is where the real skill lies. Let's adjust our risk approach based on these market phases. So the first one is accumulation. In an accumulation, there is obviously an uptrend. The, you might be more confident due to the bullish environment, and in this case, you can consider slightly larger positions, but stick to your overall risk tolerance. Stop loss, super important here as well. Place them further away though. You can give yourself that room in the accumulation in the bullish uptrend to give you room for potential pullbacks in the uptrend, but not too far away to avoid missing out on your profits and then giving everything back. That's not the luck we're going for here. In the distribution phase, we have to think a little bit differently, right? Be cautious as the trend might change. Use smaller positions when you're uh, in a distribution phase and have your stop losses a little bit tighter to limit your downside risk. And profit taking during distribution also requires a little bit of a different approach. Consider taking profits in smaller increments to lock in gains gradually, especially as you approach a key resistance level and you should obviously be doing the charting uh, there to be aware of where support and resistance lies, all right? So that is the adaptation of risk management for accumulation and distribution. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about trade sizing. Oh, I have a remember thing over here, Adara. Yes, I, I forgot, I forgot to mention one thing. Always prioritize risk management. Don't get carried away by potential profits. Adapt, but stay disciplined. Adjust your approach, but stick to your overall risk tolerance frame, framework. And think long term. Responsible risk management is key to sustainable trading success, not just the short term goals. All right, now we're on to trade sizing strategies. So there's three different approaches here that you can take for trade sizing. The first one is a fixed percentage approach. This one essentially you're allocating a fixed percentage of your capital, so say 2% per trade, per any one trade, regardless of the specific opportunity in front of you. It's simple and easy to follow, but the, draw, the drawback is you might not capture the full potential of high probability trades. The other one is called the Kelly Criterion, and I'm not gonna go through the entire thing now, but if you're more interested in it, go ahead and do a Google search. The Kelly Criterion is a mathematical formula that considers your win rate, your average win and loss ratio, and your edge to determine optimal position size. So it looks at your win rate, your average win loss ratio, and the specific edge that you're employing to help determine your position sizing. This obviously has the potential to maximize your profits if you use it correctly, but it is a little bit complex and requires a careful understanding of its limitations. Go ahead and give that a Google if you're interested. And the other one is volatility-based sizing. So you're adjusting your position size here based on the underlying risk's volatility. So what you could be looking at in these cases is, uh, is the, uh, the beta right, how, how volatile is this particular stock, right? And I know, for example, my broker will not give me margin on certain names. It'll be like, no, 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 the volatility one is too high in this, you gotta use your own cash. On other ones, I can get three to one, right? So really have a look at volatility. So this one, you're basing your positions on the underlying assets volatility, you're allocating more money for, for less volatile assets, which is a lower risk, obviously, and you're allocating less money for volatile one, which is higher risk. It's intuitive and it's flexible, but it requires familiarity with different asset volatilities. Get acquainted with the Greeks, the Greek letters, which obviously mean different things. 
in trading if you'd like to know more about this. And a bonus tip here for you guys is consider using position size calculators online to help you determine optimal trade sizes based on your chosen strategy and risk tolerance. So go ahead, you can give that a Google search, position sizing calculators, you could try to employ there. And remember, trade sizing is not about maximizing every trade, it's about finding the sweet spot between potential reward and manageable risk. Choose a strategy that suits your comfort level and adjust as needed based on your experience and evolving trading goals there. All right, let's move on to the next one there. So these are key points to remember. Don't overcommit to any one trade or trading in general. Never risk more than you can afford to lose. And risk versus reward. Aim for trades with favorable risk to reward ratios, which is where potential profits obviously exceed potential losses. A lot easier said than done and adapt your approach, guys, right? Adjust risk management and position sizing based on your confidence, based on your trend context, based on your overall trading strategy, right? If I'm trading monster shares in a consolidative markets, I'm probably not doing the right thing unless I'm a uh, range trader extraordinaire like Adara, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I'd be positioning a lot bigger during markets that are, abs that are trending, all right? And a bonus tip, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. by mastering these principles and integrating them into your trading routine, you gain the discipline and control necessary to exploit accumulation and distribution opportunities while protecting that very important thing we call capital. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And I think one thing too that I, I want to touch on, I appreciate you brought up, yes. is sometimes Thank your you. confidence in the trade or your confidence in in the setup or your confidence in the type of market we're having can impact your size as well. Bang. And I really, I don't think, you know, that's a bad thing as all, at all either. And we talk about planned DCAs, something I know you do and you and yes. I have both talked about trying to do a little bit more of within reason when planned mm -hmm. because sometimes that could be another example if, if you want to add to a position or you are you become more emboldened in a position. We talked about earlier too, the more times things brush against the level, the more um, interested you're going to be and maybe you want to add a little bit more, right? The more kind of confluence you have that the trade may be, or more confirmation you have the trade may be successful. So I think that's really um, important here as well. And you know, like what, to the flip of what Sharif said with, you said if you're in a bit more of a, uh, a range bound market, you're gonna be less likely to take more shares. I'm the opposite. Those Apple shares, I trades, I was taking a bit more uh, shares because we had more range. If I were to take right. a breakout, I would probably be like very, very, very light with my shares. Like for example, right. if, I, if I see NVIDIA break below a key level, I take that with, with very few shares because that's not really you know, the type of trade I'm, I'm gonna be more naturally drawn to. So I think knowing who you are as a trader is key as well. Also, Matthew Elliott saying, I think about, um, I heard that often, but maybe a little bit more insight into finding exit points beforehand. So I think one thing, um, it, it really is gonna depend on the type of trader you are. And so I don't know how, how helpful my advice is gonna be. A, I'm very new and B, I'm super rangy. But I think for example, I'll talk you through my meta because I have my point of exit for meta. We just keep being really, close to it and then dipping away. But so I got involved in this because we're kind of having this compression, right? So the goal is to really kind of add at the lower ends, sell at the higher ends of the range. So really I'm just looking at, hey, where are areas that we had some support or resistance and getting out there? So this 487 area is interesting to me. And then you want to set your stop because as Sharif says, something I found really helpful is whatever you're going to use to get you into a position should be what you use to get you out. So if we fail this range, if we, if we get out of this range, if we fall below that 486, that's gonna be my exit point, right? So really just setting both my, my outs and my stops along uh, w with the same parameters. And again, same with your trend line. If you're gonna, if we break below your trend line, then maybe you wanna get out. And if we get to the top, or if we have a breakout, maybe that's where you wanna take some profit, right? So I think, I hope that makes sense in some way. I really think it's about, it's gonna really depend on what it is for you, but again, within reason and having that plan ahead of time based on whatever you see in the chart that makes you interested in the trade, in the first place. Uh, Neil also here saying, winners mm. don't matter if your losers are bigger. We agree. Tesla's breaking out, guys. Uh, there, here, well, I had it up here. There it goes, 196. That, that's the end of that 196. 196.55, new high of day on TSLA as it dipped into the 10 period. Sorry to interrupt you, Adair. Yeah, no worries. That was it. I, I kind of had said my little spiel there. Um, yeah, I'm going to pontificate a little bit on Meta. Uh, I'm not sad about Meta. I will say though, so I was really scalpulating this one, and by that I mean watching for key levels. For so my initial out was going to be this, or for part of my position, because I was trying to, you know, play the range here. This 487.99. We get to 487.90. So Ooh. I switched my exit. Then we get to 487. 
or 486.89, sorry, and I realize Meta really just does not care about my feelings. I have another teeny tiny, um, like, you know, to add to this position here, plan DCA at the bottom of this range. Uh, it's at 486.25, doesn't look like we're gonna get it, but uh, ready to go here. If we break below 486, I am Audi. Thank you so much to Jose Mercado. $20 super chat, BZFD buyout. 165 a share, but how do we know when they will take over? Can you check please? Thanks for show. Um, yeah, I, I thank you very much, Sharif, for putting all those different buttons there. <laughs> Getting exciting, BZFD. I, BuzzFeed buyout, okay. Um, let me see, I'm trying to look through this article to see where the takeover is gonna come. Um, yeah, I think it's something I, I, I'm definitely, I wanna look more into this before giving any um, solid answers here, but I can definitely look at the chart for you. For sure, BZFD. I'm just gonna get out. Okay, there we go. Man, BZFD. I can't believe Apple just tanked like that again. It's the range trade extraordinaire. I should have given it more room. I might get back yeah. into this range. Go ahead. But yeah, this this BZFD. Um, let me look at the the daily here to kind of give a sense. How do you know when they will take over? Um, oh. I'm gonna look into this. Yeah, I think basically from a chart perspective, though, while I'm looking into this, so I can give um proper uh knowledge here oh so this is um so this is a report there's not there's not any actual um defined info on this right now so it's just basically the idea that the independent is going to take editorial and commercial uh control of buzzfeed uh, as reported by financial times so mm -hmm. there's no actual details on this yet unfortunately so i can't give you an answer on that but i can i can look at the chart for you for sure of course this um this 29 cent area is is kind of an interesting bottom we're coming into that and I think, you know, again, this is a huge thing I've learned here from being on this midday show in this desk with Sharif. Support and resistance and support be can, can become resistance and vice versa. This 29 area, we look like we could break above it, but that was a little bit of a, a bottom there earlier. And here we are, how to trade. Uh, but okay. yeah, in general, downward trend, steep move down, you know, petering out here. And then this this other bottom here, this, this 17 is kind of interesting. But I think to the upside, if we break above that, 30 cent, 29 cent area that could be of interest. Unfortunately though, all I'm seeing as of right now is that this is a report. I'm gonna keep looking into this to see if there's any uh, more information I can find for you right now as I, as I throw to Sharif, who looks like he's getting some Beakwater set up. So that'll be exciting. <laughs> you guys yes, love things to chat about there. But but I'm gonna keep looking into this for you, Jose Mercado. Thank you so much for the super chat. Right now what I'm seeing though good. is just nothing's been confirmed. So I can't uh, tell you anything about specific dates on that. Yes, looking to get into Tesla here. Uh, nice bull flag pattern. Looking for the previous area of resistance at around 195.50 to hold as support. Getting in a small position here, looking to kind of scalp this bad boy. Playing DCA right now, it's already in at the midpoint of this range at 195.80. So if we get that dip, uh, I'll, I'll take that fill. However, if it breaks below, 195.50, that is the end of the trade for me and we'll take a loss on Tesla. So getting in awfully high, but waited for a little bit of a pullback before jumping into this one. I, I took a small position here by design, looking for a possible DCA to get a better price. And then if we break through 195.50, that is the end of the trade on Tesla. Uh, keeping an eye on that boy. It's obviously the strong one on the day, but Meta, just putting in a possible hammer candle here as the Fuge. Now possibly looking to go green, Katina, man. I don't know if you noticed this, but we're awfully close. Tell us the position. Uber? Ah, uh, I guessed it. Uber, the Katina man is long, Uber at 80, baby. So you continue with print there as Uber makes its way up into 81.27. So we had a really uh, profitable, not really profitable, a decent trade here on Uber, but we fat fingered out here the last little bit and now it's going without us. So sucks to be me here on Uber, but we did take a little bit uh, on it at the moment. Let's see if we can uh, possibly get some, um, some moves here on Tesla. All right, so we got one profit taker that filled at 30. I have another one at 40 and another one at 50. So looking for a move up on TSLA. Uh, we'll see if this one continues to go, but Meta popping up now. It's like Meta and Tesla taking turns, baby. But which one is going to be the strongest? Let's get rid of this dead weight here called Apple. Oh, the dead one. <laughs> yeah, the dead one, baby. Uh, let's get rid of Apple over here. So here is Meta again at 488. The high of the day is 48, 488 and a quarter. Um, can we make our way up there? It looks like we will. Looks like there's a lot of strength on Meta now. They've, it's been Tesla and Meta going back and forth to be who's gonna be the highest percentage gainer on the day in Mag7 world. Meta 
making a comeback a little bit here, looking to possibly overtake Tesla, and that won't be good news for us because now we've chosen Tesla, not Meta. So we're waiting to see exactly what happens here. As I look on my side chart, Adara, do you know where SMCI is? Oh, can Don't we do look. the thing where I guess again? Uh, do you want me to guess percentage or price? You can do both. Okay, I think price, both would be good. $967.50 for price. And percentage, I am going to go, ooh, okay, math. I like math, but okay, <laughs> off the top. Let's go, let's go 11.72. You're actually quite close on both. So really? when you were talking, it was 977. You said 967. For a $1,000 name, that's close. You get the points there. And then it was 11 and a quarter, and you said 11.77. So you're close on both. You get the points. Uh, I'll, I'll give you the points there. But yeah, that, that is the Thank look you. right now. Uh, SMCI is $25, or was when I was talking, $25 away from that $1,000 area. What a monster this is, and it continues to go to the upside. I don't know how long this stock continues to go. Maybe we, we get a pullback, maybe on an NVIDIA earnings. I have really no idea. So we'll continue to watch this. Obviously, it's a tough day trading name because of the spread and the price and uh, whatever else. I wonder if this company splits, though. That's what we'll be looking for there so they can get more retail interest. Down goes Tesla here into our possible DCA, and we do get filled there at the level. Now we have to watch intently for that 195.50-ish uh, area to hold it there. I'm going to send it to you all. I'll put my stops. Yeah, no, no, of course. Yeah, I think... Um Honestly, the SMCI, I guess, what I use is I think, how, what's the craziest thought in thinking of where SMCI could be? And that's the answer I say. Mm. It's like, you know, kind of educated guessing. Like, where, where was it when I last saw it? How long ago was that? And how SMCI-ish could it have gotten since I last saw it? So that's the formula for those SMCI guesses. I'm very happy to be able to do that. Also, so I did look more into uh, the BuzzFeed thing for Jose Mercado. I did see this Reuters article continues to be a rumor. Still not seeing any specific numbers on that, Jose Mercado, but thank you so much for the super chat there. Uh, but if there's anything more, we will we'll probably get some more info on that. Uh, but that, yeah, that's the, the look there on BuzzFeed. Also, Apple continuing to be rangy. We did miss the little dip by here. I was interested in that 180, uh, 185, but if this comes back into fruition, I'm gonna dip this, gonna take it to the, the top of the range, probably take out part, like, you know what, I, we, this is what I do. I take part out usually at the previous high, then I save a piece for the dream. Um, but this looks like a range to me. I'm going to keep ranging this. I did, the, the higher highs are kind of what makes it interesting. So that's why I think for now, my goal would be to range it on the long side. However, I have no problem ranging the short side because Apple keeps showing kind of areas where it is very willing to go to the downside. Down. Also, um, I had a little meta trade. Oh. Um, I wish I had taken, this is another case of, you know, sometimes, uh, you want risk management, you don't want to get too many shares, but sometimes it makes more sense to have more shares going into it. I didn't have too many shares here because the goal was to reload at this 486 area. It didn't quite come into my area where I was interested, but I still, I'm still happy with this trade. Really, the goal, like I said, was to get out at the top of this earlier range, this 487, we got out part of it. Then we held a piece for the dream for that other range break. We got that, I was pleased as punch. So now it is a breakout, but like I said, you know, I, I, I'll trade into the breakout. I will not trade above the breakout. And I think that's how sometimes, you know, people can look at similar levels, like I know, you like breakouts, but how yeah. we trade these things might be different. So I think that's what's cool, too, is about having so many different perspectives. Neil and Sean are always going to be trading very different stuff. When Obi's on, he's going to have a different perspective. Absolutely. And sure, even I, as we were saying, we usually don't even trade the same names. No. So it's, yeah, it's really, I think it, it's really cool. And hopefully people, Absolutely you know, can get the sense that much like snowflakes, no two traders are alike. And there's nothing good or, you know, as long <laughs> as your strategy works for you and you're learning with it and you're comfortable with it, I'm pleased as punch for you. All right. I think it's going to be my take on that. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more there. So Tesla popping up back into 196 is trying to hold that previous pivot level. We'll see what Tesla does here. Already line drawn in the sand for the stop. So it's going to manifest one way or another, either in profitability or a lot. So let's talk about Meta because Meta just printed a new high of day, breaking through this initial top that we made earlier at around 11.45 or so at the top of the show. It is now 488.62 on its way to 469. It did take a little bit of a breather there in its ascent, but it did form a base, a decent base that you could have gauged. Either easy to look at ex post facto, obviously, but that 486 bottom on Meta uh, during that consolidation phase was great. So if you bought it off 486, well, you're printing two and a half dollars and the money showed up to you. Uh, Meta continuing to move up, though, breaking through previous day's highs. 
but obviously its ascent has slowed down somewhat as we are in the midday, and that is typical for the midday. So we'll keep an eye on that. The Fuge just went flat, baby. So here we go on the futures again. I saw that that huge recovery we had yesterday in the afternoon. This is what I'm talking about over here. Big move into the afternoon on the NQ to reclaim about 150 plus points. And we are right back at that closing price. And the after the market range there, the, the top end of the range there at the aftermarket that we got to. So this is a key area of resistance. It's also the overnight low. So after we broke through the range, we topped out there at 17,933. This is as low as we got overnight. So around 5 a.m., uh, 6 a.m. All of these prints came into that current level we're at right now, 17,880. Look, can we break it? We'll have to wait and see, but it's an obvious resistance level that we need to concern ourselves with. And, you know, this may actually play somewhat into how well Meta does, how well Apple does, um, or how well uh, Tesla does for our current purposes. So let's go back and have a look at TSLA. All right, we're moving back a little bit into 196 um, mid-20s there, but we haven't made any new highs, so no new beak wetters have been triggered. Looking for a top of the day break on Apple and looking for it to hold that 195.60 pivot. But I don't know, man, it's extended and... <laughs> People love getting short on Apple, but today, obviously, the, uh, sorry, on Tesla. People, uh, sorry, I'm losing my train of thought here. A Tesla in the news today because Elon was looking at moving uh, SpaceX from its uh, incorporation state in Delaware to Texas. He's also moving uh, the Neuralink from Delaware to Nevada. So that, you know, obviously has market participants excited as, well, we want certainty with respect to corporate law and, I guess Delaware wasn't offering that for them. And he's still going to appeal the decision, so we'll wait and see if he's able to get that package or not. Uzi Game says SMCI 1K today, 1.2K 1.2K tomorrow. I think we could absolutely see SMCI at 1000 bucks by the end of the day, especially if the market continues to pump here. But participate. Don't anticipate, baby. Uh, what else we got? What else we got? We got Google moving up. All right. So Google has been kind of the dead one or the red one <laughs> on the, the day today. It's been it's been tough lately for Google. Had a big red day yesterday. Had a big red day today. Uh, a lot of sell off coming into uh, that 140 and a half area at the low. And now we're at 142 and a half. So two bucks off the low, but still red on the day and below pivots. It's got to go to like 146 to get green. So Google down two and a third percent. Tough day for Google. Nothing more to report for me at this time. Keeping, keeping an eye on uh, these Meg 7 names. I kind of stopped looking a little bit at these small cap gappers as we started focusing on the Meg 7, but we'll have to wait and see what Tesla gives us here, Dara. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a gamer, but Google is red, dead, and looking for redemption here. Let me tell you, trying to make a move uh, to the upside here, running into a little bit of trouble. There are a couple stocks I want to look at, seeing some people mentioning Tesla inverse head and shoulders on the daily chart. I think it was Mr. Lib, so sorry I didn't get to get a look at that earlier, but I'll definitely take a look at this one for you now on the daily. Um, inverse head and shoulders, let me see. Okay, so, okay, okay. Um... I'm trying to make sure I know where the head and the, the shoulders are. Pardon? Oh, hi. Hi, Randy. I did not know Randy was there. Hello. Um, but yeah, I honestly, I, I will say, I want to, or maybe, maybe you meant in the intraday, because I'm not super seeing it in the daily. The main thing I see in the daily here is this 260 um, kind of area of resistance and these lower highs. But let me check on the, it might have been on the intraday instead, because I want to make sure I'm looking at the right, at the right look here on this one. Um, I kind of, I kind of see what you mean in that we did have this kind of, this, it looks kind of more like, honestly, just kind of like a, a V-shaped retracement to the upside, right? Like we had that, this kind of uh, very wicked wick here at this 195 area coming back down and then coming back uh, to the upside here. I might get it on a dip buy actually on this 9 EMA and take it up. Also, thank you, Randy, for the little cameo there. Much appreciated. I didn't notice you until way too late, but hi, Randy. Shout out to Randy, everyone. Um, but yeah, so I think, I think honestly, yeah, Tesla in general just looks kind of like a move to the upside. Oh, see, yeah, an inverse head and shoulders on daily chart. Yeah, no, I, I still think my thing is though, is I'm not, oh, I see. Okay. And this more recent, I sorry, I thought it was a wider time frame. I kind of see what you mean. I'm, I'm seeing a little bit more kind of rangy, but I do, you know, if I'm going to draw it out, cause I think this does make sense. Potentially we have a shoulder, two shoulders, uh, 185, 185. We've got a head of this, um, one 
76 area. Yeah, I apologize there. I, I do see what you guys mean. Neckline, but really, in order for this to come to fruition, you know, as Sharif says, uh, participate, don't anticipate. I think we really need to see a, a decisive breakout of this 195 area. I think that would really be of interest. And then I would be interested in a reclamation of this 208, 210 area because that was that earlier little spike. Also, you know what's going to be even more interesting of where this head and shoulders is forming is look at this earlier area of support right before November to remember. That was October 31st. And we were in the same area, this just shy of 200. So, yeah, if this, I apologize, guys, I didn't see this right away. I didn't realize how close it was on the time frame. I was zooming out a little too much. But I fully agree. I think if we break out of this, I think this could be a good look. But, you know, um, BRNX saying uh, head and shoulders not typically local patterns. Yeah, no, I, I think it could go either way. But this potential inverse head and shoulders of Tesla is interesting. Yeah. What I think is more interesting about it, though, is where it's forming. And by that, I mean it's forming at this 195 area where we had that pop earlier. Support can become resistance, oh, yeah. as we know, as Sharif brings to you there. Also, RIP Meta. Uh-oh. Meta fell with the swiftness. And Tesla, too, coming with oh, no. the swiftness as well, sadly. Oh, but our, whatever it is, what it Cyber is. truck is falling a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It's coming down. Well, you know why, Adara? Because we did reject off that key level on the future that we were just talking about the previous day's close. I'm going to bring that in to show you in one second. Support becomes resistance, and resistance becomes support. As Adara was just saying, this is the close, this white line, horizontal line on my chart. This is the closing print from yesterday. We ended up defending that and rejecting that at different times of the day yesterday. And today, right now, no different. So rejecting off that for the moment. Do we reject and then move back down all the way to low of day? Do we hold up at VWAP, which is around at 850? Or what happens here? So we're going to have to pack our patience, uh, see what the market is going to give us, and trade based off that. So right now, I'm just watching this Tesla trade. Come on. You can do it. There we go. Watching this Tesla trade to see what we can get out of this bad boy. We're not getting stopped out quite yet, but the break of that half dollar area, like I mentioned, that's the end. That's my line in the sand on TSLA, and I won't let it go any more than that. So we'll keep an eye on the Tesla. What else is uh, moving at the moment? What are you guys looking at? Adara, sorry, Adara, Sharif asks Zion Lala, can you look at Roku? Do they have earnings coming up? They have earnings tonight. Tonight, thank you. Make sure to check that out with, he hit it, the Katina Man on the Market Recap Show as he will be covering Roku. And I can tell you exactly when Roku will be reporting. It will be 4 p.m., so make sure to check out that. All right, let's look at the five. Actually, let's look at the daily. Ram Ram, can we go to the chart chart? No? She said no. All right, Roku. Look, they beat last time and they beat the time before that. So every time I talk smack about Roku, it punches me right in the face. I didn't have any trades on it or anything like that, but it, I talk smack about it and then it ends up beating. I don't know why this, is, this TV service is doing well, but they're doing well, okay? I just think they're so easy to replace. You have Amazon Fire Stick, you have the Google whatever, uh, what is that, Google Cast, Chromecast, yeah, Chromecast. Or something like that. You have Apple TV, every TV comes in with built-in, um, Smart TV feature. So I don't really get the whole Roku thing, but I don't really need to understand it. As long as the market likes it, uh, that's all we'll really talk about there. Higher lows, higher highs. Ever since ending uh, that down, down um, trend back in January of 2023, since that time, from its, from its lows to its highs, it gained about 170% when it topped out in begin basically the beginning of December of last year, so it's been a really good look for Roku. It dipped down, held the 200 period moving average last time around when it did dip, so it's been a good look there. I don't know, I think it's it's been recovering. And if the last two earnings uh, reports are any indication of how the future will be, it beat both times, right? So the technical chart doesn't look bad. You're gonna have to deal with some drawbacks and pullbacks, obviously that just looks you can, you can see that looking at the chart, but the uptrend is intact with higher lows and higher highs. I hope you print on it, Zion, but um, I've got nothing involved in it as well. So, what is this? Uh, Ivan, look at the daily for Tesla. I know I saw it. 196.35 is a resistance for gap fill short. Definitely uh, defend that. Yeah, okay, no problem. Um, what else we got over here? 
We got Elon, Adara, Sharif, nice call on sound earlier, Adara. Got in 327, then got out at 379. You want to have a look at sound? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that. congrats to you. I forgot we looked at sound earlier on levels. Oh, yeah, okay. I remember. I remember this one. I remember the sound hound. Yeah, he, he was barking. He, he, you know, barking back to the upside here. Um, this three, yeah, this 320, I, I think the 320 bottom was kind of, I was very, I remember being hesitant that this could actually break below. But I'm happy it worked out for you, and I'm happy you were able to get some, some profit there because this balance was this bounce was pretty strong once we kind of made that new higher low I, see, I totally see what you mean i think that's a really nice point of entry and you know congrats to you on that that's a that's a fantastic look uh I would be, I think it's interesting now we're kind of peering out as we get close to that 390, because like I said, that 390 is where I also think it could get dicey. This is where we were bouncing around in VWAP earlier, uh, lots of pre-market consolidation and where we fell with the swiftness at open. So that 390 could be really interesting <laughs> down to the downside. What happened, Katina man? Down, he's yelling down. The Katina man short Google 142. Uh, Woohoo! 142.50, excuse me. 142.50 at the top. Oh, nice. Yeah, you were talking about sound. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, honestly, basically my main thing is my, my levels in this stay the same. Uh, that 390 looks kind of dicey to me. But if we surpass that uh, and we get to 420, I think that could be interesting indeed. As I said, when I said this earlier, I know it, it's a level. It's not, it just happens to be where the level is. It happens to be at 420. Uh, what's life without whimsy, says the right. town chart, apparently, because this is a really clear level, this 42. Also, I am involved in this Tesla long as well. This is like the second time today we've actually been in the same yeah, thing at the same time. Yeah, I can't believe it. You always have a better price. <laughs> See, but it's because I'm ranging. It's different, too, because I'm ranging. But yeah, I, I really I got involved in this because I wanted to take this. Uh, I have part of the beak wetter. Well, not. I have a whole beak wetter set at this uh, 196.30. I have the second piece of the dream at 196.50. Should we get there? If we break below, if we make a lower low, this uh, this 195.60 area, I'm going to say sayonara. But yeah, honestly, I think today what happens is, is just these names keep getting rangy in a way that I yeah, like. So I'm, I'm getting involved in the, in the Cybertruck for now. But I think, you know, the, like congrats on that one earlier because those beak wetters up yeah. and the, the way up are really nice. So this is actually a key resistance level. So Ivan was pointing this out in the chat. And he was like, basically, look at this 196 and change. Seems to be a bit of a flat top here or a resistance level on TSLA ever since giving up the ghost there uh, in late January in that big move down that we had on Tesla. So look at the crests that we have here. January 30 at the top of the crest, 196 exactly. And then over here on the 12th, the top, 195 and a quarter. And today the high is 196.55. So clears even uh, that, that top that we had on January 30th. But for how long? I mean, is it just going to be a perfunctory wick and, wick and dip, right? Or are we going to actually start moving up possibly to test that 200 when we put in higher lows, right? So we had a bit of a... And this is what people were looking at and asking Adair and I, does this look like an inverse head and shoulders right now on Tesla with this being the left shoulder, that being the head and that being the right shoulder? Well, we know with an inverse shoulder for, for it to be valid, it needs to be preceded by a downtrend. And the reason it needs to be preceded by a downtrend is it's because it's a reversal pattern, meaning that it reverses the trend that preceded it, right? So I'm not making a comment on whether this is or isn't a head and shoulders. I'm just cognizant of it and we'll be looking obviously for uh, confirmation, any whatever different types of confirmation, whether price action or indicator wise. But yeah, very good point out there by Ivan with respect to uh, the top there. We'll have to wait and see whether that breaks and whether it's actually really a head and shoulders or whether it's just something that we want to see. So Tesla did pop in there into the 196 uh, 30s. I didn't, ha I don't have any beak wetters around there. And by beak wetter guys, if you're new to the show, that means profit taker, we're wetting our beak, wetting, taking some profits. Cause I, I see, see people in the chat there wondering what the world we're talking about. <laughs> um, next profit takers are sitting at 40 and at 50. So if they break through that level, then we'll, we'll take some profits there. Otherwise, it's going to have to be a wait and see here on TSLA. Tom H says, keep Tesla keep up to 210 later. I'm good with that. I can, I can take Tesla to that. Actually, I'm not good with that. I'm not. I will, I, I will be very displeased if Tesla goes to 210 without having first gone to 175. 
because I'm sitting in my personal account with an order at 175 that is destined to go unfilled, it looks like for now. So we'll see what we get here. But yeah, Tesla 196.55 high a day. Nothing more for me to say under this other, other than the fact that it is ranging now. You're popping into 196.30. You're dropping right back down into 196, 195.80. So the range trade that Adara so much desires looking to manifest at the moment. Oh yeah, I mean, I accidentally just punched out of Tesla, so that was kind of unfortunate. Um, but yeah, um, you know, it's, I guess, I guess to quote the Lyft CEO, an extra zero is left in. No, I'm joking, <laughs> I'm joking. Um, it's okay, we did make profit out, we didn't lose anything on this. The goal of this was, we, as you mentioned, we got into that 196.38, we got a couple pennies shy, I think, on the spread, because I did have a beak order set at 196.29, uh, but that's okay, you know what? Um, we, we didn't lose on this trade, and you know, don't smile, because it, or don't cry, because it's over, smile because it happened, and I didn't lose any money on the trade or any you know, simulator money. But yeah, that's the that's the look on that. I might get involved if, if this range holds up because as Sharif mentioned, I do enjoy a fun range trade. Home on the range, indeed, is how I feel when I am range trading. Um, yeah, I think this the, yeah this Tesla look has been has been something for sure. Meta falling back into my initial area of interest here. We fall back into where we had that um, that kind of flag look earlier. We didn't break out of the flag very much, but this, honestly, this 486 to 487 range earlier was pretty interesting. So if this kind of keeps bouncing in and out like a little uh, ping pong ball, I shall get involved indeed. Also NVIDIA, I haven't shown you any love today, NVIDIA. I'm so sorry. Um, NVIDIA, kind of interesting as well. Slightly lower highs, a little bit harder to read for me than the Meta and Tesla, which I think have slightly easier to interpret levels. But this um, this little baby NVIDIA bounce off this VWAP is certainly an interesting look um, as well here. So I'm just gonna have to see if I can follow the plan. Um, Ty Ty saying just re-enter if you got out ac accidentally, otherwise you're not following your plan. I, I understand that, I do agree with that to an extent. I think too though, um, A, we're kind of following below my point of entry now, and B, uh, honestly, because like it's not like I, lo I lost anything on this, you know what I mean? I didn't want to get in, in an area I didn't like just because I accidentally got out, you know what I mean? Uh, sometimes the plans change, and unfortunately this, this kind of changed in a way that was a bit unexpected. Still made 15 cents on this, so I, I do totally see what you mean. But also, I think, you know, I stand I stand by the decision I made in some ways as well, because that's part of what I even do with scalpulating. I'll have a plan, but the plan will be slightly adaptable. Like, you know, like, a, like an version of a manuscript that you're still editing along the way or proofreading. Um, so that's kind of, yeah, that's my take on that Tesla. But we're going to get into the lesson pretty soon. One more lesson. Bang. Do you have any um, updates here on your No, report? no, just continuing to hold this bad boy, looking for a move up. Yeah, if Tesla pops, like definitely interrupt and let me know because Absolutely, that will yeah. be exciting times for everyone. But yeah, um, let me, yeah, Ty, just like I get it, enjoy the profits then. Yeah, thank you. And I totally understand what you mean. I think and that's something I need to work on more too is holding with the plan. But I think just because, you know, an accidental exit, I'm like, I can get back in if I, yeah, Fair. we'll see. But yeah, for now, we're going to see about risk management and trade okay. sizing. <laughs> you have everything you need? I do. Thank okay. you very much. So here's this dude uh, playing around with the risk. Uh, medium risk is probably, I guess, a, a good amount of risk to have, right? If you, if you can't have low, medium is pretty nice as well. So what are some ways that we can help manage risk here? You want to have a stop loss. Uh, so this can immediately sell your position if the price goes against you, limiting your potential losses. And as Sharif put that I really like, it's your financial airbag. Yeah. Something goes awry in the car. You have some protection. You have something to to get you to keep you on track or keep you afloat as uh, the car careens off track there. So I think that's <laughs> certainly an interesting look here. Having a stop loss always very important, especially in some of these more volatile names. And uh, and also again, how you set your stop loss is going to matter a lot too. So and with regards to defining your risk tolerance, right. you might want to give yourself a little bit more room if you're in a really spready stock or like an Eli Lilly or a Netflix. Definitely not speaking for many experience. No, I'm joking. But yeah, I think sometimes if you're if you're in a stock that will be a little bit more finicky, a little bit more difficult, more volatile or more spready, you might want to within reason, edit your risk tolerance there as well. Just be really careful. Uh, and you know, you wanna be honest with yourself. It's not about bragging like, oh, I was so risky with it. You really wanna be careful and making sure you're making your decision that's right for you. Um, planning your trades before entering. This is really important. So as Sharif was saying, if you don't have your exit point and your entry point and your stop lo loss level before clicking buy, what are you doing? I mean, no, we're joking, but, but, but seriously. Okay, yeah, yeah, the yeah, fail on that. The fail. 
right? And I think as someone who definitely did that early on in my trading, specifically with I wouldn't know where I was going to stop or take profits, that's how it can kind of get risky because at that point, you're just floating around without a life jacket, without a life preserver. And really, having a plan can keep you afloat. And I think that that's really key as well. And I think, you know, and th that's something, too, I really still want to reflect on what was being said earlier in the chat with regards to if you get out too early, you don't get back in, maybe you're not following your plan. Maybe that's the thing I want to reflect on as well, right? But I think that's why having a plan is so important because then you know if it goes off the rails, you know what to do to hopefully get back on track. Trading journal, this is really key as well. So this can help you kind of collect all your trades, wins, losses, and emotions so you can see how you felt, what you did, why you did it, and what you might do differently. And shout out to Wayne for bring, letting us Remember use this trade yeah. journal uh, when we did, shout I think, it's Trading waiter. Emotions Weeks. So that was amazing. And I think really what I like too about that is uh, what he would do is even if the trade went against him, if he if he adhered to his risk principles, he would still count it as a win, which I think is really key and something I definitely learned from that as well. Uh, risk management is not going to be super exciting. It's not going to be super glitz and glam, but, it, but it's really important. It's something we cannot overstate. And I, I think, you know, now we're going to talk about what it means with regards to accumulation and distribution. So you really want to be able to manage risk, especially if you're in these accumulation zones and distribution zones. So accumulation, if you've got this upward trend, you might be a little bit more confident to go long in this bullish environment. So you might want to consider a slightly longer, larger position, but stick to your overall risk tolerance. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater to use a really Aww. gross idiom there, um, unfortunately. Uh, be, you want to be really careful still with your trades, but if you do, if you know you are in an uptrend, if you're trading in a way that is with the market, then you you know, might want to throw in a little extra, salt bay it, you know, yeah. sprinkle in some more shares. Uh, so here also for stop loss here, what you might do in accumulation is place that further away to give some room for a potential pullback in the uptrend, but you don't want to set it too far because uh, you don't want to miss out on significant advances either, right? So it's really going to depend on your point of entry and your point of risk. Let's talk about distribution, potential reversal. You want to be more careful here because with mean reversion trading, it is quite literally counter trend. So sometimes you might want to start with a bit of a smaller position, right? Until you get more confirmation than you might want to add. And tighter stop losses, of course, as well. Profit taking too, you really want to might might want to consider taking it in smaller increments because you want to lock in gains gradually, especially near resistance levels. Especially with uh, if you're going to do something a little bit more mean reversion, as someone who will sometimes trade against the market, you want to have like tight plans of entry and exit and really have a plan going into it. But again, you always want to prioritize your risk management. Don't get too carried away with potential profits. As Obi says, you don't want to get lost in the sauce. And it can be really easy to do so. So, you know, make sure before you dive into the sauce, you know, get the goggles on, get ready to go and have a plan. Uh, and, you know, adapt, but stay disciplined. And that's what I mean when I scalpulate. You have a plan going into it, but if, the, if, if you know, you get a little bit off road there, you're ready to go and someone is pumping his fist. How is Tesla going? Yeah, it's okay. okay I, just, I hate it, but whatever. We're just, we're happy. We're happy. Okay. I'm happy to hear it. <laughs> and yeah, you know, maybe, maybe I should have gotten back in, but say la vie, very happy for my pal Sharif here. I uh, think, you know, and honestly, being responsible for mis risk management isn't just going to be important for that trade, but it's going to be important going forward as well. Bang. Because if you, if you blow, you know, but all in one trade, what are you going to do with the next trade? Uh, right? Because, you know, as Obi says, where's the next trade? A prop firm. Yeah. <laughs> right? But no, seriously. You're not going to have any money. Yeah. I think it, it can get, it, it's, really, it's really important and cannot be overstated. And I think it's happy we're doing another week on this. Well said. Trading sizing strategies. So fixed huh? percentage approach. So really, sometimes you want, might want to allocate a certain percentage of your capital per trade, regardless of the specific opportunity. So this is going to be kind of a one-size-fits-all approach. Uh, every trade is going to be exactly the same. I'm just enjoying Shreve's, like happy faces <laughs> over here. That's pretty funny. Um, and then basically, this is going to be simple and easy to manage, uh, but it might not capture the full potential of the higher probability trades. And so that's where sometimes you might want to adjust your approach depending on what trade you're in, right? Giving yourself a little bit larger of a size. I know Sharif talks about this a lot. Certain trades, you're going to be giving yourself a little bit more or a little less size, depending on how comfortable 100%. you feel in it. So I just well wanted said. to put that out there. Um, Kelly criteria, this is really cool. And someone, as someone who's a bit of a math nerd, something I want to look into. Ah. Uh, a mathematical formula, that's what this is. And it looks at when average uh, win and loss, and then your edge to determine your optimal position size. And it, you might want to potentially maximize your profit uh, if used correctly, but it is really complex and you do have to carefully understand limitations. Also too, because uh, what, what might be nice about something like this too is because trading can be so emotional, if you're using math, you're taking emotions out of it entirely. Bang. It's like, it's just the market. You're just Sheldon Cooper in with it. It's the Carl Hard data and the facts. <laughs> To, to shout out a show. I like how you threw that Sheldon Cooper reference in there because yeah. he's so la he lacks emotion. Right, right but it, but he's yeah. very analytical and he's exactly. very intelligent. So that's mm -hmm. why I threw that in there. Yep. Um, He'd be a sick trader, probably. 
Uh, both young a, Sheldon and old Sheldon. Yeah, yeah. But he, the thing, sorry to interrupt, he yeah. doesn't care about money. Oh, that's that's true too. the thing. He's only care. He only cares about science, the advancement of the human. Health. Come on. But the math sure. aspect of it, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, that's of why course, I brought yeah. it up because I think yeah, you know. In addition on. to the fact, I know you are a fan of the character in the I show. Yeah. I think also though that that that's kind of a good way of looking at it. Or as you're, you're as Alfred says, you need to be dead inside yeah. the train, yeah, 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 which yeah, I think yeah. is also keen. I think if you're literally using a mathematical formula, that can take some of the stress out of it. Alfred is one of the only people who will be down five figures in a day and call me and be happy because the stocks that he likes oh. are coming back down into prices that he can buy. It's a bit psychotic, right? But, but there is, is a logic behind it, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'd be like, I'm down five figures today, right? And then like, I, I'm like, oh, well, why are you so upset? I mean, why are you so happy? Like, well, I'm buying again, <laughs> right? So he... he <laughs> you make him sound like the Burgess <laughs> Meredith Penguin. Neil, he's my friend. I'm the one that knows how, what he sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> also, Alfred's uh, like suits were amazing as well. I have to shout that out. But volatility-based sizing, also really important. Um, so you can adjust your position sizing based on the underlying asset's volatility. So this basically kind of what I was saying with uh, regards to what you know Sharif and I will do sometimes. If you have a more volatile asset, you might want to allocate a, a little uh, <laughs> less size. And if you have a, a less volatile asset, you might want to add a little bit more size within reason. So this is a bit more of a flexible approach. Yep. But emotion can get involved, so that's why it can be a little Bang. bit trickier. Um, and then also, too, you might want to consider something like a position sizing calculator so that you can determine optimal series size. This is another mathematical strategy, but again, it's not super flexible. So maybe, you, again, no, not one approach is going to be perfect for each person. Everyone just kind of needs to, to figure it out for themselves. And you really don't want to overcommit here, right? Um, oh, yeah, sorry, getting ahead of myself here. Uh, I overcommitted to that slide. Oh, cool. Don't Make sure you don't overcommit. You don't want to risk more than you can afford to lose or that you're comfortable losing. And you also really want to consider your risk to reward. That's something I've been trying to be much more cognizant of. So even in those dicey Tesla trades earlier, I was saying, like, here's my huh. risk, here's my reward. And both of those, you know, I didn't end up getting hurt too badly in them because I had, I had a plan, and the plan was executed even though it worked out against me. And that's one of the benefits of risk and reward. Also, adapt your approach sometimes. You really want to be able to adjust your risk management and positioning strategy or sizing story based on your confidence, trend contacts, and overall trading strategy. So if I'm in, um, sorry. No, no, when you're done. When you're uh, done, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so what I'm trying to say is, you know, Sharif and I were talking earlier too about, you know, range versus uh, breakouts because I know some of these things get and getting a little bit rangier earlier. That's something where I might allocate a little bit more size, but I know uh, something where Sharif would probably allocate um, a little bit less if it's going to be a range, right? So I think know yourself, uh, shout out to Drake accidentally there, but really know yourself, know what you're comfortable with, and then um, you can get involved trading in a more confident right. way. I'm pleased as punch. All right, Tesla's pumping, guys. Can we cover this real quick before yeah, we no, go? Yeah, no, we're done. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. We're done? I've done the lesson. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. I didn't realize. Um, Ram Ram, if I can just show the chart chart, that would just be fabulous, Ram Ram. Uh, yeah, she's getting upset with me today, uh, but it's all good. Um, 197.17, Adara Tesla is on the way up. It is now up 4.5%. It is overtaking Meta as the big boy in Mag7 world. We are pumping up here on Tesla. It is squeezing, and I don't know why, nor do I care. Uh, I want to take the beak wetters. Where and can I get more? Can I get some at the... Let's just put some at 40s here. We'll see if we, number one, I want to see how far we can go. Where is that resistance level going to be? Is it going to be at the half dollar? Is it going to be at the whole dollar? Or is it going to be somewhere random? That's number one. Number two, when we come back into that whole dollar 197 area, do we hold it? Or are we going to give up the ghost? 197 wasn't really a resistance level. We kind of just blew through it. The only reason I'm earmarking 197 is because the whole dollar level. But the area that I really should be looking at as a key level of support should be this 196 and a half. We had a lot of trouble breaking through that 196 and a half. Many wicks up, many rejections down. It became awfully consolidated before it really broke through. So I'm pleased I packed my patience on this one. I didn't give up on the trade. And there it goes to the high side. The next beak wetter is sitting at 40s. We did make a 35 high. So about five pennies off my high at the moment. Please just punch right now on TSLA. But TSLA is not just pumping uh, in isolation, Adara. We just got a 17.9 move on the Fuge. So the Fuge 
pumping up off that 17,775 bottom that it had. And while it just touched, well, it almost came into nine. It didn't quite get into nine. Where did it get? It got into 17. 897, so three points off the 100 point level on the future. But we are green on the day, albeit very small, 0.04%. I mean, number one, can we take 17.9? If we do take 17.9, do we break through the overnight high at 17.933? So many questions to be asked, but it's good to have all these levels earmarked. You know what to expect, you know where the levels are, and that, you know, obviously comes with a good charting and planning. There we go again on Tesla. We get the break through the 40 level. Please just punch on this name, looking for where resistance is. Kenneth Choi, shout out to you, my friend, Kenneth Choi, $2 super chat. You guys are the best. No, Kenneth, you're the best, my friend. Thank you very much for joining us and being part of the community. Adira and I are on every day, 11 to two, and we're always dropping hotlines with the lessons. Scan that QR code right there, baby on the banner. Shout out to Ram Ram and the Chilean Nightmare for always putting in work. Yeah, no, shout out to shout out to everybody here. Like, I think, honestly, learning every day, so happy to be here. Please just punch to be here learning from the professor himself. Oh, no. Um, no, no, that's not, you know. I, I appreciate you saying that. Thank you. That's not true. Well, yeah, I mean... Yeah. Appreciate it. I think, you know, too, like I think, that, like I was saying earlier, I think it's interesting, too, because you can kind of get different perspectives. We all trade differently, everybody here on the show, Bang. and we're all going to give you our little uh, food for thought there. I, I wish I had a trade right now, guys. I'm really sorry. I'm trying to get into this NVIDIA range, but this is going to get dicey because I'm kind of worried we could break VWAP here. But this, this like, seven just below 731 dip to that 732 is kind of tasty to me if we get back down to vwap i might i might take this range just kind of go in and out because i do enjoy this range i tried to get involved in meta uh back when we got down to the near that 487 area meta got about 10 points away from my entry blew back up there uh yeah and congrats to you on tesla you know i am and a little sad i accidentally exited the cyber truck earlier and i think that's probably where you know i do totally agree with the comment that was said earlier like if that's part of your plan maybe just re-enter maybe you'll consider that in the future uh, because, wow, this this was a move to the upside. You know, I'm going to try to like avoid the FOMO by saying, you know what, Adara, you would have been out by here anyway had you been involved, which is true. If they, if we have some nice a uh, little bit of a pause at this 196.40, I might actually get involved in this uh, if we bounce off of it because that's what Meta's kind of been doing, and I feel like Tesla and Meta have both been on tracks that are yeah. nothing short of parabolic. So I'd be interested in sliding into Meta's DMs or hopping into <laughs> Tesla's Cybertruck if it opens the door for me. Because Sharif said when he went to visit the Cybertruck, they wouldn't even open the door. What kind of message would you want to see from Tesla in your DMs to respond? I would, uh, maybe they'd be like, hey, there's a Cybertruck waiting for you Dang. and a driver because I can't drive. Fantastic. So they would need to give a driver. So I would need a little <laughs> bit more from Tesla. Well, with uh, autonomous driving coming soon, that may not even matter anymore. Do you think people still need to have licenses for I the... I don't know, maybe initially and then they're yeah. going to phase it out as, as the computers get better. You know what That's I mean? That's true too, yeah. That's interesting. That's fair, yeah. No, but anyways, that would probably be be the mess. I think that, you know, I'd be down. I, I think very few people would be upset if, if Tesla... Or, you know, or if, yeah, I think, I, I think most people would be happy if Tesla slid into your DMs and was oh, like, hey, here's absolutely. a absolutely. Are you kidding me? If I see a DM from, like, the verified Tesla account, <gasps> my heart would start pounding. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, enjoyed that. Yeah, no, that I'm was, kidding, guys. Oh. We're just tug-of-cheek. <laughs> Ram Ram's like, I know what I'm doing for April Fool's now. Ram Ram's going to get a verified Tesla. She can do you, it. No, you can't get the actual Tesla verified. You can get a verified account separate. You can pay for that now, but yep. you can't get the nick, the, the actual I just, screen name. I feel like if anyone can make it happen, it could be Ramin. <laughs> I feel like she'd be really yeah. dedicated to the prank. Yeah, Ram Ram is quite uh, resourceful and yeah. skillful. <laughs> yeah. uh, shout out to her. Um, Neil saying AMD VWAP, baby. So we're going to pull that up. Shout out to the Neil. Uh, let's pull up AMD, see what it's up to on the day. AMD on my chart, baby, down 0.84 on the day, but it just broke through VWAP, as Neil just pointed out, and it did break through that whole dollar level that it initially had trouble with. I'm talking about that 177 whole dollar level, looking to make a higher high here. We definitely have a higher low. Look at this consolidation bottom at 175 and a half. And then we ended up troughing out this time at 176 and a fifth, a quarter, somewhere around there. And there goes the new high of day, not high of day, but there goes the new local high to make a new high here on AMD. This bad boy looks like it's recovering on the day, looking maybe to get to that 178 top that we had earlier this morning. Adair, we topped out there at 10.30 and then again at 11 
at 178. It's about 70 somewhat, 60 somewhat pennies away from there there. So shout out to the Neil for that call out AMD looking good here. Let's flip back to Tesla. Back up, we go to the high of day again on Tesla. Looks like we're gonna break that half dollar or otherwise it's gonna be a double top. We're gonna put a beak wetter on the other side of the half dollar. We're gonna sit at 55s because that's my favorite number five. So uh, double five is good for me. Let's see if we get that move up, but Tesla awfully strong. Four and two thirds today, guys, on the day to the good. Elon in the news he, for a couple of reasons. He's moving some of his companies out of Delaware. He's none too plussed about the decision he got there from uh, the Court of Chancery, which is an equitable court. Now, if you understand the legal game, you know equity and common law, two different things. But he's looking to go somewhere else where there's more predictability. There goes Tesla through 160. Well, now we're going to put some beak wetters in front of the quarter dollar there, Ram Ram, because Tesla is going a big 68 high, 70s. I just saw 70s. Can we get 74s? Can we get it? Can we get it? No. All right, so I'll send it to you for now. Yeah, no, I mean, congrats to you on that. Certainly um, in the Cybertruck model, why not? Let me tell you. Uh, <laughs> great look. I'm trying to look at NVIDIA. I don't want to just try to short NVIDIA every pop we get, but this resistance at the 734 is really tempting, so I think we're going to get into a little teeny tiny position here. Bang. Uh, yeah. Uh, also, yeah, sorry guys, I'm not in anything right now. We were really rangy earlier today, which was great for me, and now we're decidedly not rangy, which makes it really hard for me to find places to enter. Like I said, I, I always find it a little bit harder to find levels when we're kind of near the top, which we certainly are as a market right now. I did put a point of entry here at uh, NVIDIA for 733.50. Looks like we're not going to be getting this. But um, but yeah, what, what a look here on N to the V to the D to the A. I'm going to keep this in because I do think it is uh, conceivable. Also, IWM really strong. I still have that in my side chart. I attempted a bit of a, a scalp short on this earlier. It did not come to fruition. And wow, look at this, making new highs on the rustle here, rustling to the upside. This double bottom at the 201, it was really strong. I'm kind of sad I missed that because, whew, nice pop up here. Made a slightly lower high, but then we, you know, continued to uh, kind of have this uptrend, uh, completely usurped that 203 high there earlier today. Now we're at 2307. What a look here indeed. Oh, uh, Neil announcing here. Thank you so much, Neil. Uh, OpenAI just announced Sora. It's new text to video model. Let's pull up uh, Microsoft. Let me get that out. Or a song calls it sometimes Senior Softy, I believe. Um, or Sir Softy. Yeah, sorry, Mr. Softy. Mr. Softy. I'm not calling it by its proper. I'm, too, I'm, I'm not respecting Softy. But yeah, this is a nice look here. Um, I shorted this like this range a little bit earlier because, like we said, everything was very rangy earlier today. Indeed, I think though um, too with Microsoft, just from a technical perspective, I'm going to be interested in what we do with this 406 area. If we decisively break this 406, uh, this could be a pop up into that. I'd be at least into that 408 area. Then that 4010 could be interesting. Not 4010. 410. That could be interesting as well um but also you know for this move down too i think if we fail this 406 you guys know what i'm thinking i'm thinking scalp short i'm thinking 405 area here where we had these little earlier moves and then um probably save a piece for the dream that area slightly below 405 if okay it looks like we might be dropping uh, like it's hot shout out to snoop dog before we can even get a point of entry here yeah i don't think nvidia wants me to join her little club either might be have to be mm. a case where you get in on the back end shout out to neil uh because honestly like like super, super helpful advice. And also shout out the real deal with Neil, always giving you great information. I know one of the days earlier this week, Neil was talking about how sometimes you can, um, oh, it has its own little banner now too. Uh, sometimes you might not get to a movement right away, but as long as you're, you're prepared, sometimes that's better than getting there bright, bright and early when the movement starts. Sometimes you want to be late for the party and arrive well-dressed. So shout out there to Neil and his lesson of the day, because that's something how that might be helpful for me. they're not calling it the real deal with Neil? I, was that like an executive decision? Uh, okay, well, that's all right. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, mostly just looking for, for late in the game moves here to this NVIDIA short and this Microsoft short, playing previous areas of resistance and support. If we break out of the range, I say Audi. Uh, are you looking at Tesla here? Yeah. What is going on with Tesla? There we go. We're going to see 200 today on Tesla, aren't we? 198.33, guys, HOD, so 198 and a third Tesla an absolute rocket ship today, and you wouldn't know it. Looking at any other Meg save, Meg 7 name, saving except for Meta, and Meta has become, all of a sudden, it's become consolidative, ranging between 86 and, well, 
let's say 80, uh, yeah, 86 and a half to 88 and a half. So about a couple of bucks worth of range there on META, but Tesla is absolutely parabolic. And the future, what's going on? What's going on here? Amazon's popping up and the future's moving. There was Without a the Fed talking today at 115. Oh, you Fed know what Waller. we didn't do, Dara? We didn't go through the housekeeping stuff. That's a mistake. All right, here we go. We'll do it better late than never, but never late is better. Shout is that out to a Drake, Drake. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you knew I was gonna know. You picked that. up on That's that pretty good. That's one of my favorite yeah. Drake songs too. Actually, is it? fancy, yeah. very underrated. That's Anyways, for like old school, but that yeah. That's one of my favorite. Yeah. I like how like the beginning part of the song is like one rhythm, and then the second part of the song is an entirely different instrument. Yeah, like, right. Yeah. I love it. Good call. Um, Fed Bostic speaks later today, though, Adira. That about seven o'clock. Nothing there. I'm looking. I'm looking. Fed Waller. Dropping hot lines at 115. That's probably him. All right, let's find out what Big Waller is uh, saying over there. B -L -L -E -R. Let's see if anything comes in. Fed Waller says what? Federal Reserve Governor Christopher Waller on Thursday laid out the case for the world's continued reliance on the U.S. dollar and the currency's dominance in international trade, a key advantage for the U.S. economy and the global trade. Okay, recent, com recent commentary warning of a possible decline in the, state, in the status of the U.S. dollar raises concerns about the effects of sanctions against Russia, U.S. Geo US political dysfunction, the rise of digital assets. Okay, so he's talking about the hegemony of the U.S. dollar and how it's the world's reserve currency, this, that, and the other. There has been questions about that with the rise of the BRICS nations. This, you know, and I, I read a little article today about how the BRICS nations are going to have the most amount of millionaires uh, made in the next 10 years than will the G7 countries. So, yeah, these are all predictions. Uh, we'll, so we'll have to wait and see, but... Oof. I mean, I don't know if that's a market mover. Yeah, John Kramer bringing up a good point. This moves the market. I'm buying puts. <laughs> yeah. Look, I don't know if I'd buy puts. I mean, have you looked at the daily chart on some of these indexes? Maybe wait for a trend to develop that's down. But if you want to play short term, that's your thing. Kill it. Uh, but yeah, that's um, yeah, it's more macroeconomic than specific to the financial markets at the time. But guys, it's Tesla leading the way, Meta leading the way. We're seeing some consolidation here from Microsoft. We're seeing consolidation from Google a little bit and definitely NVIDIA. NVIDIA really hasn't been its parabolic self today um, as it's kind of ranged in between, let's just say, well, I mean, it's a 700 some odd dollar name, so it's range, it's a little wider. 734 to the top, looks like here's 728 to the bottom, so about six bucks worth of range. I think a lot of traders will take that kind of range trade. Oh. Yeah, you're, you're probably pumped about that. I'm in it, yeah. Mm. So, um, Adara, now short NVIDIA, baby. Take us through that trade, Adara. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Sorry to cut you off there. Yeah, of no, I think... Um, Anytime. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I like this. You know, as, as you were just saying, too, with Drake, uh, mm. better late than never, but never late is better. Um, so we're slightly late on this. I wish I could have gotten it at the 733.50. A little bit too late to punch in, but that's okay. Got in 732.50. If we break decisively above that 734, I'm Audi. I already have a beak wetter set at 731.50. I do agree. You probably have about $6 of range, but I'm a little bit scalpier than that because I get a little sure. bit nervous. So we're going to try to take a dollar, then I'm going to save a piece for the dream around if we break that 730. That could be very interesting indeed. Honestly, I know some people are saying this could be a long, this one could reverse. I totally understand that. That was one thing I was worried about as well. But we have not really broken back above that 733 since we broke below it. So I feel pretty good about this right now. If we have a 733 hold, I might add a little bit. I have a pretty small position, but I still have enough that I can piece it out. So we're going to see what we're going to see right now, though. I think, you know, and as Sharif put it too, sometimes when something moves, um, in a different way than what it normally moves, that's something you need to keep an eye on. Because as Sharif noted, NVIDIA usually very parabolic. Today, it is, um, it's, it's really not. It's just kind of chilling out here. Taking a bit of a day off from running the market. It's like, <laughs> SMCI, it's your turn now. I've been putting way too much work. Like, ARM, SMCI, you guys do what you need to do. Also, I want to look at ARM, uh, actually, because I haven't looked at this one today at all. Ooh, okay, hi, ARM. This is kind of an interesting look here, too. Let me zoom out. D certainly not strong arming the markets like it did the last couple of days here, too. <laughs> but this, um, this 128... Uh, to 130 area, kind of interesting as a trend, uh, or as a range. I mean, I actually might get involved in this. If we if we don't make a higher high here, if we can continue to top out at 130, this 130 to 128.50, uh, long and short in either direction, could very much be of interest to me. Uh, that I like that look. 
In general, though, I find this one kind of harder to read for a longer term trade. We made this low, then we kind of tried to peter out to the upside, but certainly um, some issues here with that 130. We really struggled with 130 in, in a pretty noticeable way. So that's my look on that. Also, this Microsoft short I was considering at 406, still trying to decide what it wants to do with its life, like or what it wants to be when it grows up. Like I said, if we have a decisive break above 406, I have no problem taking this long and then piecing it out where we had early resistance. If we continue to fail 406, I shall take him short. It'll be the same kind of vibe as NVIDIA, uh, which is still kind of struggling with that 733. We're going to have to wait and see here. Right now, I'm pleased as punch, but we're going to see how, because um, I can become displeased at any moment uh, if the market, you know. I think you would choose. be in a permanent state of pleased or like, uh, I don't even know how to say that. A Pleasure? That yeah. Sounds, yeah. Yeah. If you were an SMCI, guys, we're at high of day. At on well, we made high a day right now on SMCI nine hundred and ninety five dollars on SMCI Katina man. Uh, we are on our way to one thousand dollars. I didn't think we'd see today. Well, because yesterday the closing print on SMCI was eight hundred and eighty dollars. What's another hundred and twenty bucks in a day? Uh, SMCI doesn't mean anything to it. Uh, but really, guys, I mean this has been one of the the, the biggest parabolic movers that I have personally, you know, witness day in, day out, coming in, watching it. It's not a small cap gapper. I'm not comparing it to a thousand percent mover on the day. I'm talking about a real company with a real market cap. This has over a $50 billion market cap now. And every day, it's just been that insane parabolic move. Well, do you know the short float on SMCI by any chance? Say it again, Neil. 11% is a short float on SMCI. So yeah. Yeah, just unbelievable uh, move. Is he taking off for the day? Oh, it's Obi? Obi in the afternoon? Me? Is it? I like how you, you put on a straight face, too, for that. Yeah, I believe Is it, it. really going to be Obi? Uh, the, the Obi, the one, the Kenobi, may be on with the Katina Man. Uh, as it is, it is the, the Obi, the one, the Kenobi, will be on the closing show with the Katina Man as the Neil tries to avoid this insane storm that I think that we're going to get today. He's not feeling well, my mistake, okay. Well, yeah, he was sneezing this morning, true. Yeah, yeah, we, we know now who patient zero is around here. Uh, if and when uh, anybody around here gets sick, so. <laughs> the Katina man says it's always been. I think I was patient zero one time, that stomach flu. I brought that and then the Chilean nightmare caught it. Yeah. Oh, Nobody yeah. Nobody else was, caught it. You didn't catch it. I thought no. for sure you were going to catch it. And I was weird because I had like a, like a, my weird kind of throat situation that was ongoing for like a month. Mm. And I think it was, but I was always kind of worried I was going to give that. And then when I heard you were sick, I was very worried that I gave something to you. Mm. And then it turns out it was like, you know, some kind of like very unfortunate um, horror movie type situation, which I'm really right. sorry that you had to, to deal through or deal with there as well. Yeah, yes, no, I, yes. um, yeah, people, people get sick and, you know, we're all very, we're all very close knit. So it makes, Absolutely. makes sense. But yeah, I Adair, guess have you future. looked at these futures? No, we are flying up on the future guys. Wow. 17,933 high a day. We blew through 900. Like it didn't matter. We broke 800 at the top of the show when we were, we had dipped just below that. So we've reclaimed now the overnight high. We're at that overnight high here. We've broken through yesterday's high. So today is no longer an inside day. We're going to continue to pump up here, it looks like. I mean, obviously, we're not at 18,000, and we were well above 18,000. Uh, you'll remember before that above average CPI, or that above expectation CPI print, that takes us to February 12th. We got that print on Tuesday, and then Huadunk went the dynamite there as we tanked from that 17,125, sorry, 18,125 top and we bottomed out here at 17.550. Wow, that was, and that was only a three and one fifth percent move on the future. That 600 point move was only three and one, you know, three and one fifth, almost three and a quarter percent. So great look, we're, we're about, you know, getting back into this key area of resistance. This is the uh, area that we kind of consolidated at the day subsequent to the, um, on, the on the 13th, the day subsequent. Was it the day subsequent? No, that was the day of this. Okay, so now we're getting into the level, sorry, Adara, that we were at before we tanked on uh, the CPI number. So the 12th was Monday, the 13th was Tuesday. Sorry, I just get my ducks in a row here. So the level we were at before we absolutely tanked on that CPI print was 17, 
955 to about 96. So we're awfully close to that. Getting right back into that level again. Wow, that was a short-lived uh, move down. So we'll have to see whether we reclaim that or what on the day, but it's been a great move up on the future, clearing through 17.9. Let's look back at Tesla here, monitoring this position. We're long 195.73. We were, the, the best out we had so far here on TSLA was 198.33. So that would be a, a nice move up. We're looking for 198 to get reclaimed here, but what I'm really looking at those is 197.5. This was a bit of a resistance level where before we tanked before, below 197. So looking for this 197.5 to hold up. Um, we'll have to see what kind of decisions we make around there if it breaks below that level, but good move up on Tesla. Yeah, certainly a good move up on Tesla there indeed. And yeah, I mean, that was a, the, the Fuge have, have, they've been crazy as of, um, as of late. And I think certainly, you know, with that CPI print, that certainly right. rocked the market. I remember Bitcoin especially got all shook up, shook up there. I shout out to, I guess, Elvis Presley. Also, I want to talk about Coinbase with regards to Bitcoin, because Coinbase, we have earnings um, coming tonight. Uh, for Coinbase. So let's see what kind of base we're getting before those coin earnings. Uh, this 165, but ooh, ooh, this could be flat bottom breakage. So on? I got really excited there. <laughs> I, got, I apologize. I apologize. Um, but let, like, I, I want to kind of explain this. These lower high, like lower highs all day, right? Slightly lower lows. Then we get to this 165 area and we just do not want to go any higher. My only issue with getting involved in this mm. is um, as, you know, as I, as I say, um, with, with these, all these Bitcoin names, pump it, um, <laughs> it is a little bit harder to know uh, how they move because a lot of times they will move uh, in tandem with Bitcoin. And so even if you see kind of a chart pattern you like, and I really like this flat bottom break, it's not always you know, gonna really um, come to fruition. I wanna be careful. Wow. Um, that being said, I even, even if I short 166 to 165, I could be pretty happy with that. I also did get out of that NVIDIA short. I ended up spending less time there than I thought I would. Uh, we we just got uh, 732.50, 731.50. Uh, dollar scalp in the simulator. Pretty happy with that. Uh, Microsoft, I got involved in this long here as well. Probably should have shorted it. We we're holding up that 406 well for a spell. We ended up DCAing here. I, my point of entry could have been better, but if we decisively break out of this like 405.80 area, if we really start to see kind of these these more dips to the downside, I'm going to have to get out here. This actually might be a short and might be a triple top. I was thinking we might be curling back up. We're going to have to see what we do here, but it looks like I'm going to have to um, be exiting Microsoft, turning off the computer there. Uh, not literally, but the, the metaphorical Microsoft computer in this trade because this not quite coming to fruition the way I thought it might have. Just looking for some more opportunities there. As Obi says, where's the next trade? Bang. And honestly, this, these Tesla dips have been really nice. If it was a little bit rangier, I feel like these Tesla dips could have been good. When we look at Meta here as well. Um, oh, I accidentally pulling up Microsoft again. You have a hell of a short there on Microsoft. Oh, eh? I know. I went long. That was my issue. I, I, so I went oh, long because I thought we were curling mistake. back Sorry. into that. Sorry. No, it's okay. I, I'm considering just getting out and going short mm. because we held that 406 for a spell. Got it. And then we just kind of didn't. So I think this is going to be a short. And I think you're right. And I think I, I'm. No, no, I, I didn't mean to imply anything there. No. I, I read it wrong. No, I understand. And I, but I, but I do agree with you, which is, which is what I'm saying here too. Is I thought we held, we're going to hold that. 406 better than we did. Okay. Um, but yeah, meta meta still kind of rangy in a way. Like if we come back to this 487 and hold it, I'm gonna scalp this long. Okay. Um, Fed Waller dropping some more comments here, Adair. Fed Waller repeats his view that there is no need for a central bank digital currency in the United States. I think that'll be music to the ears of crypto and Bitcoin bulls because they don't want to compete with a central currency uh, that's digital. I don't think unless, you know, it's, in, um, immaterial to them, I, I don't know. From what I've been hearing, they didn't want that. So uh, interesting view there, not like he's the end all and be all, the decision maker, but it's nice to hear his take on things that he doesn't want a central currency. I personally don't want it. I just think make, it makes way it makes way too easy to track what you buy and, and everything like that. And I don't want the government spying on me. Did you know about the LCBO's, um, the LCBO, just before I go on, it's called the Liquor Control Board of Ontario. If you wanna buy liquor in this province, you have to go there, okay? All the liquor is there. Beer sold at multiple places, but the liquor only there. They wanted to have a project, and they had a project up in the north where if you went in, you had to scan your ID. Winnipeg does that. Okay, and the reason they want to do that is because theft was going mad. They were losing so much shrinkage, and we talked about that one before. And that, it's, a, it's, a, it's a retail it is a term. term. It's a retail term. It's just the term. way you said yeah. it made yeah. me laugh. The fact well, that you said it. Well, because we always joke around about yeah. here about that. Yeah. But yeah, it, it, there was so much theft 
that they were like, no, man, we can't handle this anymore. Anybody who comes in here has to show ID so that if theft occurs during the time that they're there, the entire list of people who came in gets handed over to the police and then they come to your house or call you or whatever and they do an investigation. Were you the one that stole? I mean, I don't want that kind of, uh, yeah. you know, what, what is it called? Big brother looking yeah. at me? Like, I mean, that's nuts. And so yeah. I thought that would have been an extension of uh, that a little bit as well. So anyway, um, Tesla, new high of day. It's Woo. that half dollar, 198.50. And there we go again, Adara, another high of day, breaking through that 195.50. So it's time to take some profits here as we only have uh, six more outs on TSLA. Let's see how big we get. Can we get to that 199? And if we can get to that 199, are we going to move to 200? I feel like this one might start squeezing here if we really inch to, towards that 200. And the real question is going to be, is that if we get to 200, is it a short? Is it a short off that 200 level? So we're going to have to wait and see whether that even is a, is a factor today. But Tesla, the by far the strongest name in MAX7 world, 5 and 1 fifth percent to the good. It was dueling today with Meta. Meta was leading, then Tesla was leading. Now Tesla is distinctly different. Uh, shout out to the Obi, the one, the Kenobi. It is high a day, and there it goes through the three-quarter dollar. And a lot of fun today. Bam. Yeah, I think today's been a really, I think we've, you know, had a good, we've done some learning, we've done some trading, we've laughed, we've cried. No, I'm joking, but we've, we've certainly <laughs> laughed, let me tell you. But I yeah, do I think. Yeah, up a storm around Yeah, here. congrats yeah. to you on that Tesla trade. That's amazing. No, we're um, laughing up a storm. I, I'm, oh, I wasn't even talking about Oh, that. sorry. Yeah, no, I was, yeah. I was just congratulating the trade. Oh, but we are laughing up a storm. Um, and also, shout out here as well to um, Bears vs. Bulls are putting here in the chat. Congrats to Sean for hitting over 45,000 followers on X. So um, let's pull up this. Let's shout out to Sean. Congrats to Sean here. Um, we all, we growing baby hashtag can't stop, won't stop. Um, and then the salute emoji. Uh, some, yeah, you guys can read the tweet. This is amazing. Congrats to Sean. Check out his market recap. Check out the podcast, the pod, because that's a um, really good time. I really enjoy watching it. And I think, um, I think everyone can get a little something, something for it. Like I said, right. I, I like doing, uh, watching podcasts while I do my makeup. That's why my makeup podcast this week. Lots of good conversations. And they always talk about upcoming earnings. And I wonder, there's, there's a certain Meg7 name that, that is reporting next week that okay. maybe will get uh, covered. And its name might start with an N and end with a video. So we're going to have to see if that gets discussed on the podcast as well. But basically, long story short, congrats to Sean there. That's fantastic. Uh, what a look here. What a market. What a day. Um, yeah, all, all, all smiles over here, and as Sharif said, all laughs indeed. Yes, ma'am. Um, also, some uh, Joe Finero, shout out to you, saying Apple pushing. Ooh -hoo. Yeah, Apple's doing what I wanted Microsoft to do. So the, 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 like, as you can kind of see here, we're kind of brushing up in VWAP with the swiftness way out of that 182, 180, uh, 150 range, pushing way higher here. Uh, but I, I'm going to be interested to see here what we do at this 183 area. I think Sharif mentioned Apple 183 earlier as well. Oh, yeah. I also believe Willis Addison in the Super Chat bringing up that 183 put. So congrats to you because those were certainly going to hit earlier today. Um, yeah, a Apple, I think as we get kind of that previous area, as we get near VWAP, could be a super interesting area, but this has um, certainly been certainly been a, a crazy day of trading. Trying to get involved in some more names here, but this also, like I said, I like that Meta 487. Meta 487 still seems to be working, so I'm actually going to set a little bit of a bid here at this. Um, we're going to see if we get involved here, but I, I, I like the idea of getting involved in this name here, uh, just taking it to that higher for that 480. Just just above 48 here, be about a 50 penny winner. Uh, if we break decisively out of this 486, 487 range, I'm gonna have to be Audi. But that's my look there. Am I involved in anything else right now? Uh, yes, I am. I'm still in Microsoft, and Microsoft is continuing to tank. I think we're gonna have to if we if we fail this 40580 one more time, I'm gonna have to get out for about a 30 penny loss. Looks like an out for me. Um, some people mentioning Arm as well here, so let's look at Arm. Arm gonna squeeze. Arm gonna squeeze. Ooh. Yeah, okay. Arm certainly broke out of that earlier area. I was mentioning earlier, I like that 128.50, 130 short, uh, kind of range earlier, and Arm was like, oh, cool, we don't care. Push up now up about 5%. Really strong look here, pushing that 133. Let's look at the daily because this has been parabolic. Oh, RIP my chart. That's okay. I'm going to pull up another one. But yeah, this has been such a look here on, um, on Arm today and this whole, this whole post-earnings uh, rally. Wow, uh, for arm. Let me get my daily up. 
Yeah, honestly, again, like a lot of these earnings plays like Meta, uh, a little bit like Disney, it does kind of look like it could be a bit of a, um, a bull flag setup. But again, you know, we don't, don't anticipate, participate. What a look Bang. here of, of ARM, especially after that 78 top was pretty persistent going into earnings there. All right, baby, we are coming down here on the future and it's propelling Tesla downward. But the thing is, we're coming into a key level possibly of support here, and that goes by 17.9. So I really want to watch what we do here at the 100 point level on 17.9. Do we give up the coast like it doesn't even matter? We didn't claim it for that long. We got a, an aggressive break of 17.9, got into 17.9 a third, and so it's not one of those ones where we you know, you know, defended it, bounced off it a number of times to kind of show, no, this is going to be a support level. So watching here, want to see what we get at 17.9, bouncing off it right now. But if we give up the ghost aggressively on 17.9, while well, the next re resistance or support level, pardon me, previously resistance is yesterday's closing print, 17.880. So we definitely had trouble with that level earlier, as you can see here at 1245. We got right into that level, tanked back into VWAP, held VWAP, and then that's when we made the move up. So whether or not I stay in this Tesla position for much longer is really going to have to do with whether we hold 17.9 at this level decisively or not. So watching that very closely to see what we get from it. Otherwise, I don't have anything else. NVIDIA, awfully consolidative, but it is holding VWAP with some exceptions here. You can see that for the majority of these candles, VWAP did hold, but then there's this one outlying candle here that if you had your stop somewhere below VWAP, you obviously were triggered out. So the range trade presents itself on NVIDIA, but without, you know, it's still got the bamboozlement riddle in somewhere in there. Um, the other trade that kind of was interesting, you saw the Katina man have his biggest trade of the month on Amazon. And then look how Amazon has made its way off that 167 bottom. And now we just want, touched 170 and a quarter. So like taking that whole dollar level, we come into pivots though, and we reject pivots. So right now, 170 and a quarter, random level to find resistance unless it is basically rejecting off that pivot level. And that's why I have these pivots on here. They seem to come in to play day in, day out. Amazon rejecting that 170 and a quarter for now, coming down into uh, and below 170, possibly trying to hold that 10 period. We'll have to wait and see whether it can hold or not. But great move back up for the Amazonian. And, and as I say that, the Amazonian himself just took a seat next to the Katina man, Isn't getting it? ready for that uh, closing show uh, as the Neil is a little under the weather. Um, yeah, not much else for me to talk about, Adara. Are uh, there uh, any small cap gappers that we should be concerned with here? Let's pull our small cap gapper chart and see what we're up to here. Ram Ram, if we could, please. No problem. <laughs> Ram Ram, you don't have to say sorry, Ram Ram. Uh, CHNR uh, was the big one today, about 265%. That's giving up the ghost below VWAP, not tradable. JXJT, 162%. That's also giving up the ghost for me, not tradable. PLCE was up, is still up 60%, but well below VWAP right now. SIEN as well was another good one. It's give it's reclaimed penny stock status as it's now moved back into that 40 penny territory. And NNOX, another huge one. They've all retraced. They're all untradable for me at the moment as they are all trading below VWAP. And that is not how I trade these small cap gappers. So we'll have to wait and see whether one can present itself in the next 13 minutes or so. Otherwise, it's going to be this Tesla trade that we nurse and possibly try to take through 199. It got awfully close, Adara. We got to 198, I think, and 75, exactly. So we'll have to wait and see whether we can get that move through again. Nice skin. That's a nice name. Adara, Sharif. To get your thoughts about GLBE going to earnings next week, please look at the bigger time frame. I'm in a long-term swing or a long swing. Okay, absolutely. Adara will look at that, and I'll look at that as well. Um, it's GLBE. I don't know anything about this company. Globe E Online. All right, so she wants to talk the long-term. I'm just assuming uh, it's a chic, nice skin. I shouldn't make that assumption, but um, this is a nice looking uh, chart here of recovery. Uh, Global E Online is an Israel based company, operates as a software publisher, develops e commerce platform Globe E Watch, which enables direct to consumer cross border e commerce. That's big. Um, 
direct to consumer. The PE is ridiculous. It's minus 47, so the fundamentals don't look like they're there at the moment. Uh, a float of 113 million shares. The, fl the short float, GLBE, uh, 6.81, so not negligible. So if this, uh, if it's an earnings beat, it could definitely squeeze depending on where the shorts are sitting. Look, I mean, we've definitely recovered from that shellacking that we took in 2022 when this thing dipped into around 15 bucks. No question about that. And also with respect to the trend, you can see this very clearly, higher lows, higher highs, right? Look at that peak over here at around um, August of 2022 when we topped out at, what was that, 37 and a quarter. And then you have another peak here later in July 2023 at 48 bucks. We'll need to clear that for the trend to continue. But the higher lows definitely intact here on GLBE. Let me put the ticker. Now, what do I want to see? Where are we here with uh, moving averages? So the moving averages are, are, you know, part of the assessment of the strength of the trend is how far the moving averages are away from each other. Is the 50 really far away from the 200 or are they really close? If they're close, that means there's a lot of price volatility bringing down some of the, the closer moving average to the farther one. That's what we're seeing here. There's not too much distance between them. Be that as it may, I feel if you get above that 45 bucks, 46 bucks on a closing basis, this thing could really go and it has at least room to 50, if not more. I mean, you have a couple of bottoms there at 50. 50 is also the psychological resistance level. It's decent, but I, look, from a fundamental perspective though, I gotta tell you, uh, a minus PE of 47.64 is kind of scary, but maybe there's something you know, you don't, that I don't know about this, so we'll see. Um, Anything you want to add to that, Adara? Yeah, I think yeah. like this 42 area is super interesting to me. Looks like it could be coming into kind of that double top, triple top resistance area. We also had the other double top of 46. So those would be my main areas uh, to the upside that I'd be cognizant of if we do gap up to the downside. This giant downside, that oh, 29 uh, area is certainly interesting, especially because we had that consolidation before that uh, earlier pop to the upside, kind of around that 29, 27 to 30 range. So I would be really... Downside 29, upside I'm going to be really looking to see if we can break that double top of 42, then that 46 area would certainly be a bit of a sticking point, I think. Rahelio C saying, please holla at Holo. And you know what? I will. Let's see. Let's see what Holo is saying today. Um, shout out to Rahelio C. I appreciate a good pun. And I mean, this one, small cap gapper, it won't stop. This one does not know how to quit. Daily chart, I mean, wow, this 90 MA just bouncing like a little ping pong ball here to the upside. Really smooth look. All I have to say is uh, this is really impressive. The daily, though, I'm really interested in because, as, sorry there, as Sharif has astutely pointed out here, um, Holo was kind of the OG Holo. small cap gapper, at least for this most, most recent run. And I think here, too, inter interestingly enough, it sort of is forming. Higher highs, higher lows a little bit. We had that bounce there that moved down to 15 on February 13th. That would have been uh, Tuesday. Then we bounced back up, and now we're at this 30 area. So I think decisive breaking above that 32. That 32 seems to be the holy grail for Holo. We keep wicking into it, but not breaking it with a swiftness. I think if we have that decisive 32 break, that could be interesting. Keep in mind, though, it is a small cap gapper. Yes. So rules don't really apply. They tend to kind of move of their own accord. I yes. want to find the float on this one here, too, because... With these small caps, the main thing I'm learning too when looking at small caps, or the, the uh, when I do small cap recap, and this mm. is a huge thing, I'm I'm really trying to continue to instill in myself and ingrain in myself. Float really matters. Float sometimes tells the whole, whole story. This one has a float of 1.1 million shares and a short percentage of all, like four and a half. So that's really significant. Certainly something to be very cognizant of. There Bang. would be my take on. Hello, Graham. Matt C. asking about coin. I was looking at coin earlier. Also, I need to get out of meta in a minute, but I'm going to look at coin first. Um, coin, ooh, I see what you mean about coin maybe reversing there, Matt, because we come back into this 175.50, however, or 167.50. However, this could be kind of double topish, right? Because now we're seeing a bit of a rejection. I think, to me, what would kind of prove, and again, not, not advice, just my take on the chart, other than this range of 165 to 167.50, which is beautiful, is I would probably want to kind of see from this area a higher high. And I think, you know, if we decisively break out of that 168 area, where we had a little bit of um, a sub area of support earlier, I think that'd be more key. Right now, it looks like a beautiful range trade. Uh, but I do agree, it looks like it could be um, rejecting there, uh, or sorry, reversing there, 
just a skosh. Also, yeah, I mean, you'll, you'll Messia is saying, love your energy, Dara. Thank you so much. I love everybody's energy in the chat. I'm so happy to be here in Trader TV and part of this community. What do you, how are the Tesla and the B quarters? They're going? not bad, you know, but there is a bit of a possible, I'm, I don't know, man. I mean, it's a one minute chart, so you don't want to put too much into this, but seeing some resistance here come in at uh, that 198 and a quarter area. It's initially where we had resistance first off. We broke it, but we retraced it immediately. So I put another uh, profit taker at 198 and a quarter. I've got five more outs on this bad boy, so we'll see if we can get anything here. Otherwise, it looks like it may break down. Um, and the question for me is, where do I get out of this Tesla trade? Right? Is it this level over here at 197 and a half? Because we we initially rejected that level, then reclaimed it. So possible resistance and support. If that's the case, I should be getting out awfully soon as Tesla now is coming down into that 197 and a half area. We'll have to we'll have to wait and see. I don't want to make any uh, rash decisions on this name, but uh, yeah. And you could even make the argument of a possible head and shoulders here with that the head, left shoulder, right shoulder, and this is the neckline, obviously. If that's the neckline, then you're looking at a, a, a break of the resistance level and then down it goes. Uh, what you can do in these cases, you project from the top of the head to the neckline and then basically see what how much range that is and then project that down. That could be your line in the sand about where you can expect to take profit. So if you were to get short, through the break of the neckline, you can expect, you know, the length of from the head to the neck and then project that downward over here as your possible profit taking area. We are down. We're heading down here on Tesla. So it's all right. You know, I, I waited a little bit. I didn't want to take out the entire thing in case we got that 199, 200 touch, but still well in the money on this, but still $2 in the money. We'll see if it gets a bounce here. Maybe we'll take out some more at higher levels. But for now, just going to sit on my hands. There's only four minutes left on the show. OB, anything you're looking at? Uh, OB is not looking at anything now. And he probably is, but he doesn't want to tell me because he wants you to tune in for the, uh, for the uh, after uh, or the closing show, Adair. But we should probably remind everybody what we're going to be talking about tomorrow. And if I can just uh, have a second to load up my platform, I'll send it to you for a second so I can let everybody know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I will say too, Obi looked a little bit coy when he said he wasn't looking at anything. So I think, <laughs> I think he may I be, there might be something up his sleeve there that you yes. can find out in four minutes. Because yeah, he, he looked like he had a little bit of a mis mischievous smile that's like... Hmm. Maybe there's something on the horizon. So tomorrow, guys, we are talking about developing a trading strategy within the context, the broader context of accumulation, accumulation and distribution. We talked a lot about the importance of having a strategy and having a plan today. So tomorrow, the extension of that, we'll be talking about developing a trading strategy within the context of accumulation and distribution. Make sure to join Adara and I tomorrow as we finish off the topic on A&D. Yeah, we will finish distributing the information on A and D tomorrow. And I'm honestly like really excited. I think this week has taught me a lot. And one of the main things being that accumulation and distribution is kind of omnipresent in the market. And it's everywhere. You may not think about it, but but it's certainly it, it's like the air. It's just kind of uh, you know the air you breathe. They're like the little yeah. trees. You don't you don't think about it, but it's really important. And I think that's super key as well. Also, only a couple of minutes left here, but I do want to give a quick little shout out to Ben Zinga. Um, so really good for information. I totally use this when I'm doing working on the watch list there in the morning and uh, Benzinga Pro is one of our sponsors. We always shout them out. Uh, you can sign up today for 50% off their premier news and research platform. Uh, for retail traders, just use the code TTV, okay. capital letters. That is TTV, capital letters. Uh, use the link in the description to go to checkout. Pamp it. Pamp <laughs> it. But yeah, no, so I, I just heard, I was like, we've got to address that. Um, I'm in Meta. Meta's also looking like, we, we didn't make a new low, which is why I'm still in this. I think this is kind of dicey. I don't love my point of entry here. Still still not making a new low, so I'm going to stay in this trade. As Sharif says, would, or Sharif would say, the trade is still valid here. Yes. So yes. we're going to stay in. Uh, I noticed we had a really hard time, for whatever reason, making it above 487.40. So if I could scalp 15 cents out of this, I'm going to be pleased as punch at this point. Hey. Um, thank you so much to Bears versus Bulls. Uh, really enjoying the edutainment and great job on the trades today. Best of luck for the rest of the day and safe travels. Thank you so much to you as well there. Okay. Um, thank you, Vin. Thank you, everybody um, in in the chat. Some people joking that you are um, making the Aflac duck with the pamphlet sound <laughs> again. This is a <laughs> recurring joke that I really... <laughs> I forgot about that. You sounded... <laughs> 
<laughs> that is funny. Shout out Dan the Man Emmons. He goes, by the way, the ES June contract traded at 5101 and a quarter today. We're not rolling over quite yet to the June contract, but uh, soon uh, in the beginning parts of March. Uh, shout out to Vin, says thank you for another winning show. Shout out to you, my man. Uh, we also have there in the chat people yelling about SMCI breaking. No, you don't, for real. The Katina man says not yet. No, it's at 987. So we, the high was 995. We thought maybe you got like a 999 touch or something like that. Uh, Chet GPT, Bitstonk. No, kidding. Uh, BTC looking, f looking like last dip below 52K for a bit. Let's have a look at what BTC is up to. Uh, I'll look at that quickly because we only have one minute left on the show before we send it up to Brendo at the big desk. Where are we here on BTC? Let's go to the five minute look. Yeah, so it looks like uh, you're, we're just a smidge below 52 at the moment and having trouble with VWAP, but this higher low here could be interesting. Look for a, a break above 52.375. That makes a new high, here high on the five minute. Adair, I'll send it to you. Yeah, I mean, what a day, guys. So many trades. Um, I just realized I was in like six names today. Not all of them successful, but certainly trying to learn a lot from every name. Yeah, thank you so much there. And I know Sharif was in was in the cyber truck today, so lots of trades. Trying to give you some education and some live trading. But right now, we're actually going to just see us tomorrow because um, we got Sean Adobe at the big desk. We also have Brendo at the big desk there, guys. Hey, guys. Yeah, welcome in. Two o'clock. Uh, just getting uh, set with... What we're going to be dealing with here this afternoon, because we are back to uh, the downside as far as yields are concerned, I was just looking at the 30-year specifically has bounced.